Arjun Arya from the Esports Club here, here with some pretty awesome news. Now, as you probably know, we've been running the WD Black TEC League for Rainbow Six Siege, powered by LG Ultra Gear, for the past few months. As we come into August with our final season of the league, we wanted to celebrate with you guys who have made this an amazing experience and an extremely successful esports event. We've teamed up with some of our favorite partners to give away an entire esports PC for one lucky viewer. Yes, one of you is going to take home a complete PC featuring some of these awesome parts. First up, we've got the LG Ultra Gear 27GL 650F gaming monitor, 27 inch, 144Hz, 1ms with an IPS panel to make sure you're at the top of your esports game without sacrificing picture quality. Then we've got an amazing lineup of accessories coming in from HyperX to make sure that you're always on top of your game. Cloud Stinger Core gaming headset. For the keyboard, you've got the awesome HyperX Alloy FPS RGB mechanical keyboard. Then your mouse is the HyperX Pulsefire Surge. It's got a brilliant RGB all around the mouse. For the mouse pad, you've got the HyperX Fury S. That is the speed edition of the extended mouse pad. And then of course, for your memory, you've got the HyperX Fury RGB RAM. You've got 16 gigs at 3400 megahertz. Next up, we've got the WD Blue SN 550 NVMe SSD to make sure you're spending as little time loading and booting up and spend more time gaming. And then of course, at the heart of this PC is the Ryzen 5 3600X CPU. Now, as you know it, at the heart of every gaming PC is a great GPU. So we've teamed up with Zotac Gaming to give you a brand new RTX 2060 because frames win games and there should be nothing between you and top of the line performance. Next up, we've teamed up with NZXT who makes some of the best and most premium PC components on the market. Powering your PC is going to be the C850 fully modular power supply and your cooling solutions are going to be taken care of the Kraken X63 all-in-one liquid cooler. Now we wanted to make this PC something truly special and while the NZXT H510 Elite is a great cabinet for anyone, it wasn't enough. We teamed up with NZXT to give the winner of this giveaway a brand new NZXT H510 Siege Edition cabinet. This is a limited edition licensed Rainbow Six Siege themed cabinet from NZXT. There are only 500 of these in the world and just a handful coming to India. The side panels of this cabinet are themed in the wall and door reinforcement designs from Rainbow Six Siege and there is an illuminated six icon on the front panel along with a six icon charm and a puck in the signature breach charge design which is only available with the H510 Siege. And one lucky winner on this giveaway is going to get a full eSports PC sitting inside this beautiful cabinet. Now that you know everything that there is in the giveaway, the question is how you can take part. Well, it's fairly simple. First, head on to the link in the description of this video. Once you're at the giveaway landing page, fill out your details and follow the instructions. First, head on over to Facebook, make sure you're following us. Two, make sure you're following the eSports Club on Instagram. And three, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Simple so far. Now the interesting part. In a one minute video on Instagram, tell us why you deserve this epic new PC from the eSports Club and all our partners. Make sure you follow the instructions carefully, use the right hashtags, tag the right accounts, and you can be one step closer to winning this epic setup. Now that's it guys, just a little bit of work and you can be one step closer to getting yourself your dream PC. I'm Captain Arya and this is the Esports Club and we hope to see you in our next tournament. The moment of creation is a form of magic where an off becomes an on, a zero becomes a one, then another and another until deep in the complexity you discover order speed reliability power experience the wd black mvme ssd Fueled by 
darkness. Level up to MVME SSD performance. Ladies and ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the W Black Dish for Sub League for Rainbow Six Siege, powered by LG Ultra Gear in association with HD5 and Azota Gaming and Games The Shop. I'm your host, Blackjack. Joining me is my co host, Nam and Foxy, and our analyst, Baba Gusta, as we are here for the day four matches of Division Three in season five week two for division three is about to come to an end and slowly but surely we're about to hit the halfway point of the season as div three tonight is going to start off with a fantastic game up ahead of us but before we get to that a reminder to all of our viewers at home to check out the socials of the esports club on instagram and facebook and the link down in the description below to check out a giveaway of a limited edition rainbow six siege pc Featuring a cabinet from NZXT that is specially siege themed for this particular piece. 
There's only 500 of these across the world, so if you want to have a chance of getting one for yourselves, check out the Esports Club on Instagram and Facebook and the link down in the description below for, on, uh, for details on how to enter the giveaway. That was, a, that was a flawless plug, except for right at the end. Anyway, with all that being said, Nat versus Sang Florida Sports is going to be the first match of the day. And it's going to be a pretty, pretty big one. Nat, they have been fantastic this season. But uh, Sang Freud, they're pretty much the polar opposite. So the Clash of Opposites is up on our screens. But more on that from our analyst, Baba Gusta, over at the analyst desk. Baba, how do you feel on this fine, uh, I guess, evening? Yeah, it is. It well, is I mean, I mean, it is evening. Five mm -hmm. eleven p.m. is the timestamp of uh, Indian Standard Time. So yes, this is basically uh, definitely evening, Jack. And coming to the you know two teams that we're going to be seeing against Nat versus Sangford Esports. They're going to be going on a map of Cafe Dostoevsky. Coming back to their history wise, on the previous matchup, they haven't lost a single match mm -hmm. in Division Three. That is really interesting to see. I mean. I mean, I, I have uh, absolutely no words to talk about Nat. We actually did see some very great frags coming in from both Drish and DZ. Eventually, you know, it, it, they basically blew our minds away with that, especially when they were on defense. Uh, they sh uh, sorry, uh, DZ getting those early frags on attacks really were working out quite well in their favor. Seven I, I really want to uh, stop you right there, Baba, and talk mm -hmm. about DZ as well. Like, yep. we've got Drish and Desi coming up for Nat always, you know, standing up for them. But Desi has been the one getting impact frags, you know. He does not happen to survive the run. But he's already pulled out of play. That can assure Nat so much more stability, so much more so much more better push that they can establish for themselves. So especially when it happens to be on attack. On defense, though, he has been at it, but attack has been just another thing for Desi. Mm -hmm. So a shout out to Desi as well for those impact frags that go a little unnoticed, but hey there, I did get I did, did get to lay my eyes on you. Yes, uh, some great great plays from the man himself. Absolutely, Foxy. How can I not forget about Desi with his uh, critical plays for Team Nat to gain a certain dominance towards the other opponents and hopefully push them towards victory. And my God, it is working quite well on their favor. Uh, yes, uh, talking about the match against KL11 on previously, it was 7-3 to three in which... Uh, they had a little bit of problems facing on attack where we did see KL11 successfully, you know, winning post-plant uh, thanks to Bot with his excellent SMG11 plays uh, with the mute. But in the end, Nat just immediately stole the show away against KL11, proceeding their dominance for the past 7 to 10 rounds. It was on the fear of uh, Nat giving no wins or to KL11 on attack. So which is, that is really, really great and exciting to see how uh, Nat has been performing Excellently. Going back to Sangfraud Esports, uh, it's it's very yep. unfortunate yep. for them to go through. To like, uh, I, I have uh, it's 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 really bad for me to say about it. But uh, according to their win loss ratio, they haven't won any single matches. Indeed, a zero to three win loss ratio. Uh, we did actually see a really uh, disappointing and a very unfortunate match on yesterday where Sangfraud Esports weren't up to the task. And yep. And actually lost against Naves Gaming on map Team Park, only winning one defense. And yep, uh, we actually did see Sangford Esports going up against Saw, which was a very close, uh, uh, putting it to maximum overtime on map Coastland, but looks like it didn't work out quite well. Saw won against Sangford Esports with the short effects. The, uh, the player on the side of Sangford Esports having a total of 17 kills at that time. So coming up to the community votes, uh, we're going to be seeing Nat a total of 71%. Uh, Sangford Esports is around 29%. So, I mean, I, I still, I, I'm still glad that the viewers who still, you know, support for Sangford Esports, maybe they might be able to see some great plays coming in. Hopefully, you know, winning that one uh, important matchup against Nat, in which uh, Nat are basically dominating on Division Three. Well. Only time will tell as we're going to be seeing them go up against each other on map that Cafe Dostoevsky. And fingers crossed, let's see how well they're going to be performing, Jack. 
Absolutely. Thank you for that beautiful analysis of the game coming in, Baba. And just as you said, Sankfred Esports have not had the best of times or over the last couple of seasons, really. They only barely managed to avoid getting relegated out of the tournament season four. And now they are down 0-3 on their match count in this season, season five. We're already in the band phase of this match, ladies and gentlemen. The match of... Uh, I mean, I guess you could call it the match of opposites based on their current positions in the leaderboard of Division 3, you know. And uh, overall, Nat on the attack on Cafe Dostoevsky is going to be a pretty interesting, uh, interesting rounds coming up to our screens. The bands, in the meanwhile, have been taken care of as the match on Cafe will go right on ahead as the... Bands, let me remind all of our viewers at home, are the Thatcher, Nomad, Maestro, and Mira. No surprises on any of them. You kind of expect all of the jobs to be banned these days, and that is what we're going to be seeing from both of the teams in play today. Let's have a quick look at both of the rosters from the side of Nat. We've got Dexter, Dizzy, Desi, Haveli, and Drish. While from the side of Sangfroy, we've got Hyper Tushy, Stoneheart, Psycho, True, or Discount True, as he likes to be called these days, and Shot Effects. Second for a reading room and fireplace hall is the side of choice. We've got a Valkyrie 6 pick in, one of the operators, uh, well, one of the ops you expect to be banned on uh, Cafe, but, you know, it is what it is. Valkyrie's in place. So is the Maverick, the 6 pick from Haveli is in, and that's two hard breaches on the side of the attack. All of that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen. Round one will be underway, and Foxy... The mic is yours. All right, thank you for that, Blackjack. We're back here. Nat was a sang for esports. And just like you both, both of you happen to imply on the fact that Nat has been at the top of the game. Been, uh, they've been defeating people left and right, beating teams left and right. And in fact, even through the qualifiers and through Division 3, they've been staying strong. I love to see that kind of performance from Nat. But right now, my eyes will be on sang for esports. They happen to be one of these teams that happen to be on. On Division 1, you know, held their own against those teams in Division 2. We got them to see with a little bit of downfall since then. Division 3 at the bottom of it right now. New teams coming in and just just walking right over them. Definitely not the place you want to put yourselves in San Fred Esports. Needs to sort whatever is lacking for them right now. Definitely they need to pull, you know, pull, pull all of their strings, in fact. We've seen the first defensive side come out on the first floor, in fact, quite interestingly. So, it'll not be on the on cocktail lounges, not something we get to see a whole lot, but that's how we've been seeing the trend take away in the league in itself. We've seen teams that are up for this first, then they happen, and then they go back to church, I mean, cocktail and lounges. So, that was just a joke, guys, that's right. I mean, happened to lose, that was a ranked joke where we get excited and choose sites we don't want to be choosing. We lose them and then we don't play them ever again. But yeah, that being said, we're seeing this. He's already holding down the sand. He's almost found the Jaeger here. Most possibly will be able to convert that into a possible frag as well. But will he be able to do that? Or no? Is a real question. Zoff 12 Breach will come in for the Zofia. Very easy for her to do that, but he's got to be careful about the Womai. The Womai wants to go for the speak. In fact, this counter will be watching that angle. He's got himself some nice. A nice line side as well, but there's so many, so many ADS and my charges that are catching Zofia off guard. There's so much work happening right now for this one Wamai. So much utility burning out. He wants to go wide. He wants to find these, find these skills for himself, but he's just, uh, just not aware of this position. Just no intel trade off despite the Valkyrie being played in. Maybe the cam has been taken out as well. The push up is caught out and Thresh will take the fall. Discount Crew is going to get the first track for himself and sign for these points. Really good, really good on early and a very good entry frag as well. But we're still seeing Hyper Tishi allowed to play so aggressive. He's gonna find one. Oh no, he's gonna find the Hibana, but not find her. Not literally, literally, he just knows the position where the Hibana is playing. That floor is definitely not see affordable, so it's just not anything that the side operators can do for him as well. We'll see a three-man push convert to a two-man push, two-man hold. In fact, from Hyper Tishi and Stoner, that is no sorry, that is going to be discount for the oh my. The push is coming in from the attack, and that'll be the first frag for... Oh, no, that is actually going to be Discount for winning that. He's going to get the triple, in fact. Discount through amazing gun power that he's brought on board with the my pick for himself. The aggression from Hypertus, she's win, win this fight, though. That's the IQ taken down. No, the IQ win that double dizzy coming in once again. Discount from Mewa did find a squad kill before going down to the IQ, shutting down the ace. And almost ace for Discount with the 4K starting off. The, definitely a great start that he's put Sangfred Esports and himself in. Let's see you still, if you're still able to see Dizzy put out these two kills on board. He's going to get the first one. Now that's going to be the third one for this round, in fact. But the first one is in his little journey that he so 20 seconds for the clutch. The 
push up will come and he does hear somebody but he's not gonna win that fight as the smg 11 against the railings and the smg 11 wins psycho on the mute is gonna get the frag in that'll be the first round secure for saying Freddy esports not not uh not very textbook play but really amazingly well played honestly it was great there's a good defensive round round two will be underway we've got the first round and then that means they will be going to kitchen service and kitchen cooking not cocktail yet uh not surprised honestly that's good we're getting to see a huge excuse me we're getting to see a huge rotations from uh the teams in terms of map approach as well that's amazing in fact round two will be underway let's see who happens to make this match a little spicy or will it just be will it just be sang for esports walking over nat just like we saw them do in the first round what are your thoughts on that blackjack Your bombs from being All right, looks like uh, Blackjack is not here. In fact, just realized Blackjack is not in the lobby. I'm sitting in. I must have possibly dropped me a message or something regarding it. No, he hasn't. I mean, it's me. I, mean, I hope he's all right. <laughs> he's just having a power cut, maybe, guys. Don't worry. We got ourselves a uh, round two underway, at least for now. Got discount to his making sure he's but the Valkyrie this time around, not of a mind to play. Strange, you could still use the Mumai, you know, happens to be a site like Kitchen Service and Kitchen. Kit <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the side of the freezer wall, interestingly so, you've got the castle barricading off and completely making the side of Atrian alien spot, in fact. Definitely something that Nat can take the sweet time and, you know, decide that push onto. Or they could just go for the direct challenge and, uh, and go for the push on the side of freezer. Not the bakery approach. But uh, looks like the positions and, and the formation that Nat is coming in onto is going to be a bakery push indeed. And just like I said, definitely a place that they can take advantage of. But they've got to be scared of the Romans as well. Definitely a huge uh, word kill play emphasis will come in from the side of the defense in terms of how Sanford Esports happens to happens to inflict, uh, inflict fear upon their enemies. As that is what I'm going to call it. But no, already the push-in from Nat is here. They see he's pushed up awfully close. He's going to get the first frag in. And it'll be kind taken off the board. And now Sanford Esports puts on an easy tight spot. I believe he's going to get a frag under Dizzy. That was your IQ playing right behind the Ash. Uh, oh boy, this country has found himself a wall bank deep. That's amazing. That, I wish he had the clip for that. I'd love to see that, but... Well, he's trying to make some hooks and get a frag in that. A great rule, in fact, definitely something you take advantage of. And Seinfeld Esports have definitely come around the kind of strategy that, that, that they were trying to employ. Happy to hold the side entirely from offside, while they see on side is really not able to do anything except for that kill, though. Along with Dexter popping off Psycho, that it's a two versus three right now. Make that a two versus two. A shot of fixes here. He's going to get the first frag in, and that'll be just taken off the board. They're so far not having a great day being that influential player for his team. Just not able to stand up to that kind of expectation today. Not so far. Round two is still underway, though. They're still getting some tech coming in from this country he's trying to find the ash or is that the hibana is trying to go for the plan but the white b comes in he's gonna find the ash but at a huge cost of the hp it's all under dexter and one was to do all of a sudden he's got to find two frags one minute 16 seconds left to go for the plan he's got the diffuser in hand but is this a bait and switch that we're getting to see coming from the side of the attackers Dexter wants to attempt this plan. He's waiting for a possible push up from the Jaeger. And yes, the Jaeger will take the fall. And that will be the kill. Shot effects takes the fall, that is. Wow, three solo on HP. Discount to one bullet to the body. And it will be no more. Plan will go out. C4 to play, but that does not connect. And that is the wrong C4. Anyway, the plan is still being stuck. Dexter on the plan. Now he's got to play this post plan. He will be playing that to perfection. In the first clutch from Nat comes in. Dexter with the one versus two on the Hibana, using the patience and the time to his perfection, making the clock work for himself despite being on attack. Amazing well paid from the side of Nat, put another round on board, and that's the equalizer. One, two, one, and we are going into round three. One to one is the scoreline on round three. The early game, early game equalizers in. But, you know, it uh, doesn't really say a whole lot. It could go either way from here. Many, many different scores could be the outcome from this particular point. But regardless, an early game equalizer is the sign of a good game. And that 1v2 right there was fantastic from the Hibana right towards the end. And, you know, that C4 throw could have been better from the Valkyrie, right? Uh, you know, uh, going above the bar wall, the bar back wall. Unfortunately, it didn't go where it needed to go, and that was still the wrong plan as um, 
The attempt of the denial was towards the side of the default plan. Unfortunately, we, the plant wasn't even by that, uh, even in that vicinity, it was in the other side. That's what a lack of intel does, ladies and gentlemen, as the assumption can be one way. However, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't where the assumed plant spot was. And uh, at the end of the day, intel is king in Rainbow Six Siege. That's just a saying, that's not just a saying, that's pretty much fact even, even now. And it will especially be fact starting the next season, Year 5 Season 3, because uh, for all of those who have been playing the TTS, I know I have, I'm very excited for all the changes Ubisoft is bringing in with the new season. It just... It feels great, at least in the test server for now. Hopefully nothing uh, messes up towards the transi uh, transition towards the main game. Shot effects with the Valkyrie cameras going out of the building. At least one towards the side of the mining room balcony. Train balcony, as it used to be called at one point. The IQ is going to be using those uh, RD scanners, taking out the Valcams. Dizzy scene one. He should go up there to take it out any second now. He's just weary of anyone that have uh, made it out of the building's perimeter. But doesn't look like anything has towards the, towards the west end of the map right now. So he's just going to be rappelling up, giving the intel to his teammates and taking out the camera as and when required. There we go. He sees it. And there she goes. Valkyrie camera number one destroyed. There's a couple more to go. Not on the attack. You know, they've made a couple of mistakes here and there. But uh, Sang Freud, they have also... I mean, it's not like they haven't made their mistakes. Winning one round isn't exactly a huge deal, shall we say, when you have to win. At least be the first to get to seven rounds won. Or, on, in, in case of overtime, the first to get to eight. As uh, the fight is on right now. That's what the real... Uh, the real point of the matter is the fight is on sangford esports want to win a match for themselves they want to make sure that they get themselves that one win not at, at the very least one win to have a better position at the end of week two than they did in week one you don't want to be at the bottom of the table going into week three ladies and gentlemen that's a fight that a lot of teams are unable to come out of on the victor side and that's why Sangford are going to be fighting tooth and nail right now on this match here on Cafe Dostoevsky. Day four is going to start off with a bang. However, Desi, he could be taken out. The peak he's taking is pretty dangerous. There's an echo close by Stoneheart, but uh, no kills being taken yet. Minute 15 remaining in the round. The Omai is trying. The attempts are trying to get the Omai out of Dark Spot right now, but True is holding on tight. He's not willing to let go of this hold. He's, his shield is still there as uh, there's enough denial from the side of the attack to make sure that he is not flushed out. At least there's a, a, you know, there's enough use of utility. Or wasn't, hasn't been enough use of utility for that matter. Uh, speaking of true, he's actually going to go down in the meanwhile, trying to take that fight on the angle that he had made while Daisy takes another one. Hyper she goes off the board. True's been confirmed under by the Twitch. Thrish takes that kill. It's a 5 versus 3. Serna finds one. Shot finds two. As Dexter and Daisy go down, it's a 3 versus 3 right now. But the smoke inside of Cold Room, that was not a peak he needed to make. It's a 3 versus 2. Watch this being peaked. Haveli finds a couple. Will he find the last one? The Echo's peaked. He's taking damage. He's moved towards the side of Bar, but there's the Cold Room angle. But the Maverick is not going to be going that way either. Haveli low on HP, very low on HP in fact. As the push from the cigar shop is in, he's trying to plan, but that's a bait. The Echo's going to see the Maverick. Shots are going to be fired. Cigar door has to be watched. It will be. The IQ's there. And the Echo's going to go down. No 1v3 coming in from Stoner today. As a Dizzy will be the one to close things off on round three, third floor bar. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to give the side of Nat the early game lead. 2-1 to one is the scoreline in their favor. And already you can see Sangfried, the kill distribution, not really that great from them. Discount True doing the best as he can in three rounds. Six kills to him, while the side of Nat, it's a much more evenly distributed kill set. But of course, kills aren't the only thing that matter in Rainbow Six. It's also the support. It's also the intel and the callouts and everything else that a team game like this is made out of. Round four is going to be underway, and we're heading to second floor reading room and fireplace hall. Right, round four will be underway in the two to one. A good advantage that Nat can have themselves uh, have themselves very comfortably uh, sitting on. In fact, that is that is one places that you you want to put yourselves in. Happen to be. The team on attack and Nat on attack has been amazing. They've been amazing. Oh boy. Nat has definitely been coming out with some amazing attack runs, honestly. It's coming down to Nat. I'm not sure how long these guys have been playing together with each other, but for some reason, it shows like it's been a little too long. Like, you know, this roster is stuck with each other. 
playing yeah. each other, playing with each other, experiencing each other for a little too long because the way it looks like they always have a possible refrag potential established, but more more importantly, it's not even falling down to the fact that do you need a refrag? It's coming down to them having essential crossfires ready always. And that is huge, you know, coming in from, from a team uh, that just happened to qualify through the qualifiers, coming into Division 3, getting to see that kind of play. This was, in fact, uh, on, on, a different, uh, on a different parameter, though, this was the, my same feeling about KL11 making it through qualifiers and into Division 3, but they've not exactly been standing up to my expectations coming to Division 3, not on the... On the other hand, happens to be another tier 100 valence here. I'm gonna have to say that I don't uh, mean to disrespect Nat in any way with that statement. It's just the fact that tier 100 valence, there's no way I'm even, you know, throwing in a little bit of a subtle one as well because valence have been amazing. And look at that early aggression from short effects. They're gonna claim a life. That's one of the Valkyrie camps that did not get taken off. So much information faded off. Possibly went for a. Not yes, he did. There's the refrag right back from Daisy though. He's gonna get the first frag. Yeah, that be Ash. Uh, find that stray on. That's up top and fight on Skylight. That, that was your. So you've. That's a nice strike indeed. This country is uh, definitely facing the heat here quite a bit because now with the Jaeger dead as well, there's no backup when he happens to move back. The, what the. How did the. How did Drish walk away with that? How did the. How, he gets a double off of it. He gets a double off of a rappel into the white hallway window. Nothing that the defenders could do except for get the refract finally. Short effects will be shutting down Drish. It's a 2 versus 3. Already put themselves in a really good. In a really bad position, in fact. Psycho and Short effects are all that is left. You got Psycho. He's, she's not got the. She, she's got the C4, if you, excuse me, C4 in hand. Uh, great, great uh, confusement coming in. That's right, people. Confused, man. We'll still, we'll still be seeing him in cover. But the C4, you might as well claim this. No, the Ash is too fast for it. Going for the rotate after hearing the C4 rip coming in. And uh, let's see what happens. Going at a 2 versus 3. Still established. Nothing going in anybody's favor except for the drop that is being expected from the side of the attackers. The push will be in from the other side, though. They've got to be careful about this. Short effects knows exactly what he wants to bring out on this angle that he's having to play on the bottom of the white stairs any time now. Pushes in. Short effects very patient about this. He's got to find the first frag. He might as well find two of the angle. Will really he be able to convert that? He's not going to find the first one. That's a cleanup from Nat once again. Look at those crossfires. Dizzy gets one and they see with the cleanup. Nat has definitely been on top of the game with the gun play that that will bring on board. Look at that aggression. Both of them committing to a 1v1 and winning 1v1, happening to keep themselves always in the advantage, you know, always playing on the straight offs, coming with the crossfires. Once again, that some amazing team coordination puts them another round on board on attack for a map like Cafe. 3 to 1, round 5 will be underway. And that right there is a fantastic example of why Nat has turned out to be one of the best teams coming in from qualifiers into Division 3 this season. Even when they lost that body, even when they lost that one man that equalized the man count in favor of no one in particular, the call was in instantly that the that there's somebody playing the white stairs, what they didn't know originally. And then, just as Foxy said, the commitment to the individual 1v1s taking those gunfights and not only winning them but winning them with a rather uncanny level of uh, coordination it, it went off instantly it was this maverick gets dropped and both defender heads get popped Ooh, that was uh, something to behold as right now we're going to be in round five and i believe the side that was initially being peaked was first floor kitchen but looks like sangford have decided to go back to second floor reading instead attempting this site one more time this time with the castle in play hypertrophy playing the operator with the ump and we're going to be interested interested excuse me to see if uh, if we get to see once again drish you know rappel through the white stairs uh corridor window no we actually won't because there's a mute jammer in play along with the castle barricade the way old mute castle combo right there oh that brings back some memories of um, of uh, absolute uh, foolishness that I used to do back in the day but you know that's 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 a long time ago it's been a couple of years from that point so uh, moving on round five underway the twist jump doing what a twist jump does trying to find any defender utility and uh, take uh, take it out as fast as uh, possible Drish he'll probably be looking to take out that uh, white stairs window mute jammer yes no maybe okay there's a little bit of a cluster right here the hyper and discount shoe on the dark spot of cigar or lounge 
Actually, the castle is going to pull back down the white stairs in the meanwhile, leaving the Womai up on the second floor, at least towards the side of Cocktail. Not Cocktail, excuse me, the side of Piano. Cocktail is being held by the Jaeger, that shot effects. Nat's got a good uh, attacking advantage right now, and they're going to be looking to expand this even farther because going into the defense on Cafe is definitely a good, good situation to be in, especially if you're in a 4-2 or a 5-1 advantage. So 5-1, obviously, in most regards, is better than a 4-2 regardless. But uh, in, in the situation that we're in right now, where a team like Sangford is in question, sure, they may not have had the best time in the last uh, couple of matches, last season, in fact. They could still be a very dangerous team. They are still a very dangerous team to go up against, but not if they make peaks like that. Shot effects trying to find the Ash towards the side of the East window, and they're trying to find the one in bar. Isn't going to find either of them. The Yankees is going to pull in through Cocktail Lounge. Not quite. Through the, through the bar, through the bar desk. Is she going to find him? Shot effects holding down Cocktail back. There's an Ash on his window. Oh my, this is a push onto this one man. Avel is the only one to have taken any damage. Shot effects is somehow still alive here on Cocktail Balcony. The castle trying to fight. Driss is taking some damage. It's a, it's a cacophony of gunfights right now. As a flashbang is coming off, Hypertrix is going to be throwing, excuse me, he's going to be holding down the white area. As Avel finds one, but Shot effects finds him instead. This country found Nat uh, Drish in the meanwhile. Leaving it at three versus four. Massive amount of chaos. And the chaos has subsided just temporarily. However, Hypertrition shot still in a bit of a pinch. There's a vertical angle that's being watched by Dexter, the man with the diffuser. is still on the white corridor. He's going to try and get that, but no shot of it. He's going to find one more. And oh, that's the worst time to throw a flashbang. Daybon is going to go down as well, leaving this with the last man standing. And there's the run out or the jump out from shot effects out of that cocktail balcony window that he was being pressured on not too long ago. Finds the kill on the ash and pulls back into the building as Sang Freddy Sports have put their second round on board. Round five goes to them, and it's a three to two scoreline going at round six. Nat still in the lead, but only by one round. And now the question is, will the equalizer come into play? That's a real question. In fact, round six will be underway. Will the equalizer come in from the side of Sang Freddy Sports or not? But even with the equalizer coming in, I would say it is still not walking away with a fairly better position that they happen to set themselves up in when it comes to round six. Most definitely. What I'm really, really interested to see, though, is the fact that have, have we got Nat once again, you know? Uh, I've, I've been thinking about this quite a bit. What if Nat happens to dominate Division 3? All right, what if they do? Maybe. They're, they are doing right now. I mean, that's what, that's what happened to both the idea in my head. But happening to go to Division 2, once again, they'll get shut down like that. That is exactly what is happening to Havocs as well. You know, now that you think about it, coming in from the qualifiers, dominating Div 3, going to Div 2, not able to survive that. So, speaking about something like that, I would love to see these teams, you know, able to just, just keep getting themselves promotions. And so far, only one of those legendary teams has do that. Really blame them. They've been amazing. They definitely have improved their game so much in, in terms of like a short term of three months definitely a new change up that's that's right people i'm talking about variance they had them go from qual not able to qualify for the qualifiers for three months that is three seasons then coming in going straight to division one not stopping definitely so much more so much more i'm expecting from them definitely you guys can come and watch them play as well on saturdays and sundays that's when the Division 1 players go live, but right now, coming back to the match. We've got Nat though. <clears throat> they've been amazing in Division 3. They've been dominating, in fact, through the qualifiers into Division 3. They've been amazing. They've been loving, loving just to spend their time, in fact, in this division as well. But will they be able to survive this and will they be able to keep that kind of domination alive? The aggression is in and that's the down disease going to take the fall. That's a very important one as well. Short effect has definitely put the IQ in a really huge HP disadvantage. We'll get the revive in. Most definitely because with the point system off, he does not know that. But no, free kill goes to the exit for that discount to, to peak that angle. He gets that kill nice and easy for himself. He's going to go, oh boy, I thought that's a defender coming in. That'll just be the Hibana. we still got uh, a 5 versus 4 established and the 5 did come in. But that's a, a bit of a disadvantage. They've set themselves up in that stone art with the kill. Look at that. That shot with the TCSG. So, in fact, I was not expecting that. I was actually, I was actually off my, off my spectators and and combing my hair. But anyways, coming back to this, we got ourselves a nice.
frag coming in once again. I put him standing up for a sleep. He's gonna find another frag. And that'll be Dresh taking the fall. Dresh not having a great day today, not able to do the influential plays that he loves to do so amazingly well. But uh, looks like it's just gonna be more of his team performing. Just ahead of the castle getting spotted there. He knows this, but it'll be Desi to take that out. Desi, this is what I'm talking about. The amazing, amazing impact frags that Desi happens to bring out for the team. But still seeing Dexter make the push happen on with Dizzy on the breach. That's a good position in terms of what they're trying to bring out, except for the diffuser. It's still in the hand. The Ash. They want to go frag him. That's what I'm thinking about. This Dexter is gonna get the first frag in. Stone Art is gonna find the Daisy instead. That's a huge and a very important kill. Not enough HP damage done as well. A C4 will come out. That's a good bait and switch play for them. Short effects scores out from the hallway in the open. He's gonna find the first frag and that'll be a take of the fall. It's on with the Dexter. He's gonna find the first frag, but will he find the second one? He has to go prone. And yes, he will. But Short effects is not at that doorway to contest that as an angle. Dexter wants to get aggressive, wants to find this frag. He does know that he's not at the diffuser, but it'll be Short effects already playing inside the side of reception. He's waiting for this. Very cheeky spot right now. He can definitely pull this off. Dexter so low at HP. He's expecting this push up from the closet hallway, but Short Effects is very p patient about this. He's going to beat this out. But the plant will come in indeed from the side of the Twitch. Does not want to attempt the plant here. Does not want to attempt the plant at all. In fact, we're going to go wide about this. Short Effects is not pushed up, not even for a single bit. And that'll be Sang for Esports bringing in the equalizer. Oh my god, that was one second away. Oh boy. So look at that, the Twitch greeting him right behind him. Oh my god, that was that was so close. But they're still time for esports walking away with uh, the third round for themselves, and that will be the equalizer. In fact, round seven will be underway, and a good turnaround things that we've got for ourselves. And Rios will be called on to from the side of time for esports, and Rios will be awarded. That's right, we will be going to Rios, people, and we'll be right back in uh, from round seven with the second half of this match. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. And uh, Sanford, uh, excuse me, Sanford Esports versus Nat will be resuming in just a while.
All righty then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the game between Nat and Sangfroid Esports. We're coming back on the other side of the Rios on this first game right here on Cafe Dostoevsky. As right now, the match, just before the Rios, of course, has gotten just that little bit more exciting because we've got not only round seven roll swap, but also a three to three equalizer between both of these teams. And oh boy, let me tell you, a three three equalizer definitely makes me all excited as Nat will be going on the defense on round seven and Sangfroid will be going on the attack. And uh, that's pretty much what round seven roll swap is. A three scoreline meaning that it's a it's a roll swap of the truest sense because you're effectively starting out from scratch but cafe being that defender setter map you know it's not a heavy defender setter map attackers certainly don't have as much trouble taking rounds on a cafe as they do in maps such as excuse me right there in maps such as clubhouse and or theme park then again, every time I say theme parks, the defenders had a map, uh, you know, attackers start taking around. So uh, the, the jury's still out on that one. A couple of snakes mixed right here. Drish with the Omai and a shot effects with the IQ, bringing both denial types into the match right now. Utility denial will be a massive aspect of the rest of these rounds because either team with more or better place utility will have that advantage. And then it comes down to the gunfights that you manage to take. And of course, supporting every single one of those facets is Intel, which is why Intel is king, ladies and gentlemen. As right now, round seven is in play. We're heading to first floor kitchen from the side of uh, Nat as they want to give themselves back not only the lead but also the a big lead hopefully a lead that takes them to match point will it be a 6-3 is the real question here as of right now oh boy this game i mean it can only be stated so many times how exciting this game is and i say that for a lot of games but uh, in, in most cases you know it is an exciting situation to be in because Rainbow Six Siege is one of those games where, where even if all the chips are down and in front of you, at least that's what it looks like, there's more than meets the eye, and it could turn around in a fraction of a second to uh, the other team's favor. And that's why you always want to keep your eye on the ball. Never get complacent even for a second. And uh, ooh, the game punishes you very hard for being complacent even for a single moment. This country is going to make his way towards the side of third floor piano. And the hatch is going to be broken from the, his uh, teammates right there. Of course, the gridlock with the super shorty, making sure that the hatches of third floor are taken down nice and quickly as the Rome clear will be coming in from the side of Sang Freud's attack. But they got to make their way first uh, to second floor. Make sure there are no roamers here. Make sure that the C4s are baited out and they don't do any damage to the side of this attack. They don't lose any members to this either. And uh, that is uh, going to be a pretty interesting task because uh, not often, like uh, often those C4s do a lot more damage than you want them to. But there's only one C4 that they have to worry about. That's a really the Valkyrie bringing in that facet for the side of the defense the scout true he's got a nice long vertical angle that he's contesting right now all the way down to the cold room area at least the desk or the counter next to the clo or the cold room excuse me not gonna find anybody will he see the head of the woman yes he does but doesn't quite get the kill just a little too late to react on that and the man's able to sit back and relax, but Drish is going to find one stone arts on the board. And that's a pretty big drop right there. The sledge is down. That's a lot of... Uh, excuse me right there. That's a lot of... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of damage right there. A lot of soft breeze that the side of the attack could have used. Albeit the slice has done quite a bit of that already. It's not enough, shall we say. Dexter in the meanwhile is going to be down. The smoke has taken some, uh, has taken a, a bit of a beating as well. Ooh, Drish, you want to be careful on where you're making those rotates happen inside of sight. Hypertrophy trying to do what he can at the rest of the attack. Oh, dear me, Dexter. He was down just now and falls right in the clutches of the Hibana. Once again, this is going to go down. Hypertrophy gets that kill as well. 
as it's now four versus three. Sangford Esports are looking a lot better today, but the Valkyrie is going to start things off by equalizing the man count three versus three. But the Y goes down inside the side. That's the cold room has dropped right there. As shots are being fired, the Valkyrie is contesting by the door. The C4 comes in. It's not going to find anybody as the plan should come off any second. Now, Psycho's got the diffuser. She's going to be doing it as there's Daisy with one. He's got to do this in a one versus two. What will probably be a post plan situation for the Jaeger to try and play in. He's trying to play vertical against the attackers, but no luck so far. Drops into sight. There's Ibana going prone, and he's going to find that kill as it's all down to the one versus one. Shot effects versus Desi. The GSG9 against the GSG9 operator. Jaeger peeking by the bomb. He's got to be careful. He doesn't have intel, but now he does. He knows exactly where that JD1 shot came from. But shot effects, he's rotated towards the side of Kitchen Cooking. The counter defuses in. The Jaeger's pressing it. He's still pressing on it. No, he's gotten off of it. Shot effects knows that that was a potential bait. Shots are still being fired. Is that another bait? The is going to hold and peek and then get the kill. Well done from shot effects. Once again, patient as much as he needs to be making sure that the Jaeger had no other choice than to go for the counter defuse if they wanted the win. And that will give the side of Sangford Esports round seven on the attack. It was a little chaotic, a little clumsy, but they still managed to get it, uh, get it done as, um, as well as they could in that situation. The 1v3 could have happened right there. Unfortunately, it didn't. And that's why SF are now in the lead, 4-3 in their favor on round eight. No, all right. <clears throat> Three to four, definitely a great, uh, great scoring that we happen to happen to have here over here for ourselves. A great turn of events. Let's see who's, who's going to be able to stand up against each other. Round seven will indeed be underway. Uh, round eight, excuse me, will be underway. Let's see happen, who happens to happens to take it. Excuse me, there, guys. I was a little too preoccupied with my my head onto. Uh, finding the statistics of Nats players, you know, what uh, what kill death ratio they have, what was the performance in week one and stuff. But yeah, I could not find it in time, ready, so I'm not going to speak about it. But for now, we'll be going to round eight. That's that's what we want. So yeah, I got disease, brought out the Roni, in fact, on the Monzi as well. A uh, good operator definitely could use him as, as a kill machine if you want him to. But uh, I would really recommend you to deny as much as or cripple the attackers as much as you can and then happen to go a little more frag oriented drone. And you bring out maximum drones out for yourself. Even if you pick three drones, that's huge. That's, that's already putting the attackers on a huge deficit, especially when they're trying to establish map control. The three, three pests are unspokenly important honestly because we don't speak about it a whole lot they're very important for that so let's see what happens though i've got haveli is running the bandit and the yay both of them playing awfully close or oh, does somebody else awfully close that would be the she wants to go c4 play but he won't be able to do that he's just gonna fall back at least for the moment he's just not able to pick this up but we'll see dexter get aggressive awfully aggressive in fact over here his exchange place with haveli haveli wants to go back and try and att attempt a bandit trick as that is what they're expecting, the C4 from the kite has already been expelled out. Maybe that's a pre-play C4 coming in from him. There we go, Thresh is going to get the curl in and that be the Valkyrie. Where did he even get that? Was that above him? That's amazingly well done. That was really good. That was a C4, pre-play C4 itself. I'm not sure where that went down, but that was very nice. And maybe he threw that outside here. Yeah? No, never mind. Anyways, we got the Valkyrie pushing back up. He's not going to be found though, but Dexter takes the ball and that's a huge the push up is in, but that'll be spotted by the Jaeger. He's gonna get the first frag in. He's still got the push up happening from the side of the attack. He's not aware of this. You gotta be very careful about this. The first one will be Stone Art meeting the crosshairs of the Jaeger. He's gotta be very careful. Stone Art has made his way in. He knows that now with the now with that little bit of pre fire comes in. The Jaeger. And that will be the frag for Daisy. Taking the frag in once again. Daisy has been amazing today. I talked about him pre-match, and today, look at this. The boy's been off popping off. Added back to back cycle, can take the fall to the Valkyrie as well. They see the way to take the fall finally, but the Valkyrie is here to finish up the match or the round with a double kill. A good conclusive kill with release for Thresher. Definitely has uh, used one of his defensive sides to, you know, round himself back up, come back on the momentum that his team happens to be standing at. 4 to 4 is the scoreline. The equalizer is right back into place, and it's been quite the match. Nat versus Sangford Esports going head to head about this. The two and throw them, really loving it. 
Round 9 will be underway. Let's see what uh, Round 9 has to offer for us, in fact. 4-4 four to four is the equalizer, and you can tell Nat is not about to give up their win streak right here. As, uh, you know, Round 9, at third floor bar, we're heading back to the top floor of Cafe. After finally winning uh, the Defenders, that is, winning first floor kitchen. The Mozzie is going to be brought in in place of the smoke. That's an interesting six pick right there, as Mozzie is more Intel Denial and Counter Intel rather than the smoke, who is uh, area denial. And, uh, you know, he's pretty good in that uh, diffuser situation and just wasting time in general for the attackers. Therefore, Bar, you know, you could make the argument, maybe, you know, the side of Nat don't like to play smoke up here. It could be the case. It most certainly could be, as it depends on a team's, uh, a team's persuasion towards one particular operator or site or a gun, even, for that matter. You know, as uh, sometimes you have... Uh, I mean, I won't say that people, uh, uh, players, excuse me, in competitive tend to play the Maestro or Alibi's uh, slug firing shotgun because that's just um, that's just unrealistic. You know, I, you don't. Nobody expects that gun, and nobody really should. That gun's not really that great for competitive, at least playing as seriously for that matter. I believe the bandit is gonna put down those bandit batteries. One behind the shield of the Mai. That's an inverted shield that they're using on piano as well. The dark spot right there as uh, that should give Dizzy just a little bit more area to peek through. He's also going to make some punch hole angles on the base of the piano stage inside of Cigar Lounge. Looks like the Ash wants to go through the bottom and then work his way up to the top. Discount True is going to be focusing on that, making sure that anybody who's roaming down the first or second floor is going to be taken to the cleaners as quickly as possible. There's the IQ towards the eastern end of the building as well, but nothing coming of it quite yet. True, making his way around Train Museum. He's directly below the Wumai. Of course, there's a hard ceiling above him right now. He's going to take out that uh, default camera, make his way to inside of reading yes there we go this is where we see lots of ash and or zofia vertical angles being played no zofia from the side of sangford not the one not that i can see at this uh, in this round at the very least stoneheart there we go the sledgehammer comes out finds the window and will he find an operator off of that or will he be found as there's gridlocks track singers going off all over the place of really takes a lot of damage and he gets blown up to smithereens as the man inside of co uh, say, uh, excuse me cocktail lounge has just been, uh, he's been blown up in uh, in no in no uncertain terms. This country getting that first kill and in a rather stylistic fashion right there, putting things, uh, yeah, putting things in favor of the side of St. Fred Esports. They are five versus four right now, but it's only one that drones is spotted with Drish is playing. The Shiko spot underneath or close to the skylight by the paintings uh, in between bar and the balcony, new balcony that is. Lots of vertical being played right now from the side of Sangford. They're not really pushing on the side, at least not yet. They will eventually uh, make their way up the stairs, down the skylights and whatnot. But this country is going to be taken down by the AC. That is the Jaeger starting things off for the side of the defense. But Psycho finds Dizzy in the meanwhile, as another kill has been just been secured from the white corridor window. They seem so low on HP as the planets come out. Hello, Sona has just repelled into sight. And I don't think the side of the defenders know. At least they need to make sure that they get that kill on the Psycho first. And they have. The kite comes in, but there's a crossfire established to take him out. As Stonard takes that kill on the Dexter. It's a two versus three right now. Shot of Excipitage and Stonard have to hold this post plant as the Mozzie's coming in. Will he be found by the AQ? Yes, he will. It's a 1v3. All down to this. He who's currently on the white stairs. And not much he can do from here as the cross angle is being watched. But no, he finds one. Will he find the repeller? That is, of course, the sled. Stoneheart, he's got less than 20 seconds remaining as there's a couple on that area. They see he's going to be going for the counter defuse, but no, Hypertus is here to take the kill as the gridlock will finish things off for the side of the defense. They see attack, excuse me. They see goes down, and that gives the side of Sang Freud the lead yet again by winning round nine on third floor bar. And looks like there's been a little bit of a disconnect coming in from the side of Nat, and they're going to be calling for their rehost now. As we'll be right back on the other side of the rehose, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned.
All righty then, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the game between Nat and Sangford Esports. Once again, we just had a Rios coming in from Nat because of a disconnection issue. And to get the player back in, we had to rehost the lobby. But that means both teams have, in fact, used up their rehost. And there will probably, hopefully, be no more rehost from this point onward. No more delays on the conclusion of this game as it is 5 to 4 on round 10 in favor of a Sang Freud Esports. They've put themselves with the lead yet again after a fantastic round on third floor bar. As we'll be heading back there, excuse me right there, we'll be heading back onto third floor bar once again on round 10. And oh, I was about to say, Drish, he was picking the Oryx really quick, but no, he's gone on to the Bandit. And uh, right now, Nad, they need to sort of tighten things up. They haven't exactly been at their best, shall we say, for the last couple of rounds, as the Capital will be six picked in out of the gridlock from Hyper Tushy, bringing in the Brazilian three speed operator. And um, it's still funny to me how Cap's a three speed being as old as he is, but hey, if, if the man can run, Defense more power to him. Round 10's in play, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, this match is getting more and more excited. Foxy, any thoughts about what the potential outcome of this game could be? I, when walking into this match, I was expecting Nat to, you know, have a very dominating performance. And I think I shared that with you as well before the match started. But definitely, yep. my opinion has in fact changed to what um, I think this match might turn out as I'm not sure how it will turn out but I'm definitely sure that we want more of that and more importantly we want to see we want to see a very tough fight and that's what we're getting to see hey man at the end of the day my inner siege enthusiast is still satisfied so we're gonna we're gonna roll with it for now we're just gonna enjoy this beautiful match we got round 10 underway we got Daisy running the Jaeger once again for the scoreboard reset back to zero that really looks uh, very empty to watch that on round 10. Seen some amazing, amazing, beautiful plays come out from both these teams. And you want to have that kind of uh, accountability for yourself as well. You know, you look at this covert and feel, oh, damn. I'm playing so good, I'm going to keep popping off. And sometimes you can just go like, all right, I'm not able to play the best. I'm going to play better right now. I don't know, man. It's just, uh, it's just some mental stuff that happens to bother me a lot. I think about every single time of the day. But anyways, back to this. Dizzy, he'll be holding the Womine down. He's the Womine who's holding down. The Sadist Cigar launch. But here's the opening kill. Haveli is going to find one. As he welcomes in Stoneheart to his Haveli. Definitely not something that Stoneheart was expecting. Not that kind of an aggressive welcome. Not that for sure. You got this country moving up. He's uh, met himself in the mining room. We're going a little bit aggressive here. He's got to be aggressive. He's got to be careful of that... Uh, on that push up from the Valkyrie, he's gonna spot him. No, he's just heard him in fact. He's heard him right. There's somebody that's coming up the white stage. He's gonna get spotted. That'll be the trade off. A dump down comes in. That's still gonna be the pay play for Twitch, though. He does not know that somebody else pushing up on him. This could be huge. Oh boy, that Zofia has pushed up awfully close. She's gonna get one, but there's a refrag right back from Haveli above. This is going huge. Hibana is trying to push up as well, but will she get spotted as the bandit? I'm not sure what he's trying to do. He's gonna try and find. Oh my god, psycho. Oh my god. Well then. That happened. That happened. Oh You're my right? god, Ivana. Yep, yep. Anyways, that does put <laughs> Hyper in a one versus four though. Oh my god, dude. Uh, Man, I love I love Division 3 players. I've got to give it to you. It's good. It's it's nice. You you enjoy them. And um, yeah, that as well. You get to you get to have sleepless nights as well, maybe. You know, I'm, I'm taking it a little too far. Jokes over, people coming back. I put this here, one versus four. We still got, we still got um, so much time. 40 seconds left. Definitely could get the first kill. And no, he won't do that either. Nat will be claiming back the equalizer once again. And on both these teams, it one run away from taking this to match point. It could be anybody's game right now, people. But I might be a little too suspicious about uh, which team I'm favoring now coming back. To see how round 10 went down. Uh, round 11 will be underway. The equalizer is in, in fact. Yep, equalizer is in. 5-5, five to five, and what a way to go into that equalizer right there. I'm not going to say uh, what happened. We all were there to bear witness, as now this game slowly but surely heating up, and, uh, you know, some people are probably caught up in the heat of the moment, and uh, there's a little bit of a delay happening. Okay, I'm going to stop.
All right, okay, okay, I'm going to... I'm going to stop right there as Shadowfix is going to take the six pick out of the Zofia into the IQ as round 11 is underway and whoever wins this goes to match point. That goes without saying five to five being the score line and we'll be heading into the round of ones which is an inevitability. But are we going to have a seven five victory for either team or is this going to be overtime? That is the real question. We've got the golden reinforcements coming in. Looks like there won't be any extended holds coming out from the side of Nat's defense. They want to stick close to side and make sure that they get everything uh, in place. Yeah, probably the bar holds just going to be a Jaeger sitting there behind one of the shields. If, if either of these uh, operators is running a diff uh, is running a, like a shield, I don't think so. Is, is that four C4s? Unless the Valkyrie is running a deployable shield, I don't. I think there might be four C4s in play. Question mark. Uh, well, we'll find out when we do. Dizzy in the meanwhile running that counter until that we all know the Mozzie 4 as... Uh, yep, that is 4 C4s. All right. 4 C4s from the side of Nat, bringing in a lot of destructive... Uh, like, explosive utility, excuse me. And that is... Uh, ooh, there's going to be a lot of explosions this round. That is for sure far more than the usual. As Psycho is going to make sure to break open the piano whiskey window. Maybe someone's going to repel in from there. Maybe she's making sure that there's no peaks from that window. At least this late, uh, this um, early into the, this early into the round. I don't think there's anybody on the third floor. There's actually just Mozzie and Mute on the second floor, which leaves the side of the Valkyrie, uh, the Kaid, and of course the Jaeger back on first floor. Looks like uh, there's gonna be a two-man two -man hold onto the top. And okay, that's interesting. The second that second panel on the floor is not even breached. I'm not sure what quite happened right there. As uh, Dizzy holding down towards the side of Pillars. Drish, I think that drone may have spotted him. He's gonna pull back for the time being. Not much happening. There's a little bit of a standstill as the cameras and utilities are being broken. But as he comes in, is he going to claim the ash? It does. Dizzy starts things off in an explosive manner as swift shots galore. Whoever that is outside of the train museum window has just missed an opportunity, a golden opportunity, to take a double as uh, Drish will barely get away with about one, maybe two, five HP on him. And he's going to be downed and revived by the Valkyrie throwing that C4. Please do not press G. Availing. There we go. He's going to pick it up. There we go. No issues there, ladies and gentlemen, as it will still be a five versus four. And Sangfried may have just let go of the entire round right there. Dizzy is going to take one more. A double kill for him. The drones are spotted exactly where he is. The man's going to pull back. But there's somebody at the mining window right there. He's still going to be able to get away from that. And just to pre-fire, just to make sure that nobody's going to peek him in return. Drish is going to take his place on the train museum window. And Stoneheart goes down, trying to throw out one of the gridlock track stingers on the red stairs. The diffuser drop, but more importantly, it's a five versus two. Hypertition shot effects, the only ones remaining, while Drish and Dizzy are low on HP for the side of Nat. Vertical lens side are going to be established. The shot effects are going to make his way down the brown stairs. He won't be met with any resistance just yet. But pushing up through bar, he's definitely going to be met with somebody on the red carpet hallway or on white stairs for the matter. There we go. Red carpet hallway all towards the end at Small Bakery. The kite gets downed, but one is there to refrax that Drish. And Dizzy gets the final kill on to Hyper Tushy. And oh boy, just as I thought, well, I, I believe that was Hyper Tushy outside of the train museum. The gridlock outside train museum window missing that kill onto at least the mute. And that was a flawless round from the side of Nat on round 11 means that they are on match point six to five, ladies and gentlemen. And it is now the round of ones. One round for Nat to win it all and one round for Sankford Esports to go for the equalizer for overtime and a second chance at winning this game. We're going to be heading into second floor reading room right here, ladies and gentlemen, as we've got Dexter with the cap can pick. All right. That's pretty interesting right there. Kappa is in play, ladies and gentlemen. And second floor reading is the side of church. We've got the buck being picked by Hyper Tushy, bringing in the Canadian soft breach. 
on to that skeleton skeleton key and uh, second floor reading of course is one of those sites where you want to make sure that you have vertical control just as much as you have third floor and second floor control obviously if you want to get the plant off you need to have side control for that and uh, one of the best ways to get side control at least on reading room and library that is is it to have vertical control from top floor Right now, it's going to be the usual set of the Mew Jammers, the Mozzie Pests, and uh, the Cap Can Traps this time from Dexter. Bring in the 9x19 VSN and a C4. This looks like uh, ShadowFX has just lost his drone. He's a little sad about that, understandably. Those things probably cost quite a bit. But, uh, you know, there's no compensation. He's, gotta, he's just got to roll with it, and he's just got to move on in this round. As uh, one drone in the entire drone economy may not sound like much, but one drone can be the difference between all the intel and no intel at all. That's just how close it comes down to when it comes to Rainbow Six. As uh, yep, well, there we go, just finishing up the finishing up the setup here on the top floor is not. And Drish, uh, it looks like he wants to hold down towards the side of. Uh, Piano's door, bathroom. He's gonna put down a Mew Gemmer right here. Reinforce it? Nope. Okay, never mind. He's just he's just deciding what to do. Puts down the Mew Gemmer finally with no IQ in play. Of course, that Mew Gemmer is gonna be safe for a larger period of time in the round. As Discount True is trying to find where that Mew Gemmer is on the side of the piano wall. At least he's looking out for one. They know that there's a Mew in play. Ooh, that came a little close right there. As a Drish, he could have been wall banged if he had been if he hadn't been where he was uh, right towards the end of the ashes free fire he's actually going to reinforce that off nice and quickly dresh uh, using up one of his reinforcements for that as this is going to start things off finding shot effects taking him off the board now definitely look like they are content with winning this game right here right now not going to try and push it to overtime at least not going to let the side of uh, Sangfroid push it to overtime. We can hear the uh, M249 soft Stoneheart going off on one of the windows right there. As shots are still being fired to open up lines of sight and the Mute and the Jaeger in a huddle, or at least they were in a huddle on the White Stairs area. Mute's gonna pull back and Dizzy's just peeking the White Stairs along with Daisy. Pellets, ex pellets coming out from the Hibana on towards the side of the cocktail lounge. That's a softball as well, but Dizzy's going to find one more. That is hypertrophy of the board. The man's gotten a double kill for himself. Is he going to find a triple? Yes, he is. As Discount True goes down, and Dizzy has just put this out of Sangfroid on a massive, massive disadvantage. As Stoneheart with that track singer knows the fact that there's a mozzie there, but there's only so much he can do. He's got to worry about the runouts. He's got to worry about the peaks. While Psycho's going to shut down Dizzy before Dizzy can do any more damage. That's a kill for the Hibana. Well done right there. But they, along with um, the gridlock, have to find one, well, four more for that matter. Stone is going to drop. The C4 is going to come in, but is it going to claim him? No, it won't. The C4 wasn't even thrown right there from the Valkyrie. Haveli saving it as uh, the hatch on the Hatch and Trade Museum is going to be broken open as well. Stone is slowly making his way down. Not doing a whole lot as once again a two versus four right now. It was a two versus five. They found a kill. Psycho with that uh, shot onto Dizzy, shutting down the Jaeger as Hypertrophy, excuse me, Stoner is going to be going for the drop. On towards the side of the fireplace, but no, Psycho goes down. It's all down to the gridlock, finds one and gets taken off the board. Drish is there for the reflag instantly. And uh, unfortunately for the side of Seng Freud Esports, round 12 goes to the side of Nat. No overtime today, at least on this map, ladies and gentlemen, as Nat are your victors. They continue their win streak by taking Cafe 7 to 5. It was definitely a much closer game than pr we probably expected going into the match. While Seng Freud, they gave it their best shot, but they will be continuing their losing streak in Division 3 for season five but that of course was just the first game of the day ladies and gentlemen the night that is as we've got another one names gaming versus team l2k coming up very very soon but before we go to break let's have our thoughts from baba gusa our analyst over at the analyst desk baba the mic is yours well uh, thank you so much jack and what a way to end the match nat not even letting Sangfrod Esports put it to overtime. They've been performing quite well. And that crossfire angles, the way how they, uh, you know, every time when they gunfights on both attack and defense is quite extraordinary. Uh, yes, uh, and we have... Uh, as I recall, we actually had a total of uh, a two to three rehosts. But finally, actually, you know, I... I checked all of the rehosts and finally got the scoreboard. Uh, uh, short effects, a total of... Uh, 
Wait, I actually wanted to say uh, talk about Drish. Uh, Drish has a total of uh, 13 kills. That is quite impressive though, because uh, on on that specific map where we where we were almost about to see overtime, Drish actually has got around that much of kills, which is really quite impressive. Uh, the recovery is coming in from. Uh, you know, on, on the side of Sangford Esports was very well done, especially when they were trying to go in on attack, where we did see a crossfire angle being placed. Uh, Hibertushi and Short Effects were, were, were they, they were quite struggling to, you know, get to, you know, get those important wins as best as they can, but they were quite bested from the Romas themselves. There was one particular place where in piano control, every single time you see piano control, Nat always gets that control every single time on attack. They don't have any problems dealing with the Bommai, the deployable shields, the two ADS is being placed and also a lot of magnets in which you have to dump around a total like eight or nine utilities. I mean, the six flashbangs, you know, an extra three flashbangs for the, uh, you know, the Bommai's magnet so that the deployable shield will be uh, vulnerable so that they can be able to take it out. But this time, they actually quite... Uh, they actually did uh, had a change of the operators instead of uh, us seeing the IQ. We actually see, uh, uh, I believe, uh, it, was, it was the like two of the operators. Uh, one was DZ and another one was the Drish, I believe, who was playing as the Twitch, taking out those important utilities every time on attack, which gives them the piano control as fast as possible. Now, coming to Sangford Esports, so they have uh, they have been performing really quite well because. We actually did see them win three times consecutively on round five, six, and seven. When, uh, like, on two rounds when they were on uh, on defense, and seventh round when they were on attack, in which they did perform miraculously. And uh, yep, uh, even though with all of that uh, perfect, uh, you know, frags, the cross, uh, the the plant that in which they they've been able to make it out, they couldn't handle the DZ's. Uh, they couldn't handle DZ or Drish's aggression coming in from Team Nat. And with that, we're going to be seeing Nat a total of four wins in their leaderboards, uh, being on the the top of the leaderboards for now. But currently, I'm quite ex uh, it will eventually be able to change as we're going to be seeing on the next match indeed. That is going to be really interesting to watch out. Uh, watch out! It is uh, Naves Gaming was Team L2K, I believe. So, yep, I'm really quite interested to see what's going to happen there. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that analysis, Baba, of the last game that we just had. As we'll be taking a quick break before we come back before with the game, excuse me, of Naves Gaming and Team L2K. A fantastic game coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. Captain Arya from the eSports Club here, here with some pretty awesome news. Now, as you probably know, we've been running the WD Black TEC League for Rainbow Six Siege, powered by LG Ultra Gear for the past few months. As we come into August with our final season of the league, we wanted to celebrate with you guys who have made this an amazing experience and an extremely successful eSports event. We've teamed up with some of our favorite partners to give away an entire eSports PC for one lucky viewer. Yes, one of you is going to take home a complete PC featuring some of these awesome parts. First up, we've got the LG Ultra Gear 27GL 650F Gaming Monitor, 27-inch, 144Hz, 1MS with an IPS panel to make sure you're at the top of your eSports game without sacrificing picture quality. Then we've got an amazing lineup of accessories coming in from HyperX to make sure that you're always on top of your game. The Cloud Stinger Core Gaming Headset. For the keyboard, you've got the awesome HyperX Alloy FPS RGB Mechanical Keyboard. Then your mouse is the HyperX Pulsefire Surge. It's got a brilliant RGB all around the mouse. For the mouse pad, you've got the HyperX Fury S. That is the speed edition of the extended mouse pad. And then of course, for your memory, you've got the HyperX Fury RGB RAM. You've got 16 gigs at 3400 megahertz. Next up, we've got the WD Blue SN550 NVMe SSD to make sure you're spending as little time loading and booting up and spend more time gaming. And then of course, at the heart of this PC is the Ryzen 5 3600X CPU. 
Now, as you know it, at the heart of every gaming PC is a great GPU. So we've teamed up with Zotac Gaming to give you a brand new RTX 2060 because frames win games and there should be nothing between you and top of the line performance. Next up, we've teamed up with NZXT who makes some of the best and most premium PC components on the market. Powering your PC is going to be the C850 fully modular power supply and your cooling solutions are going to be taken care of the Kraken X63 all-in-one liquid cooler. Now we wanted to make this PC something truly special and while the NZXT H510 Elite is a great cabinet for anyone, it wasn't enough. We teamed up with NZXT to give the winner of this giveaway a brand new NZXT H510 Siege Edition cabinet. This is a limited edition licensed Rainbow Six Siege themed cabinet from NZXT. There are only 500 of these in the world and just a handful coming to India. The side panels of this cabinet are themed in the wall and door reinforcement designs from Rainbow Six Siege and there is an illuminated six icon on the front panel along with a six icon charm and a puck in the signature breach charge design which is only available with the H510 Siege. And one lucky winner on this giveaway is going to get a full esports PC sitting inside this beautiful cabinet. Now that you know everything that there is in the giveaway, the question is how you can take part. Well, it's fairly simple. First, head on to the link in the description of this video. Once you're at the giveaway landing page, fill out your details and follow the instructions. First, head on over to Facebook, make sure you're following us. Two, make sure you're following the eSports Club on Instagram. And three, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Simple so far. Now the interesting part. In a one minute video on Instagram, tell us why you deserve this epic new PC from the eSports Club and all our partners. Make sure you follow the instructions carefully, use the right hashtags, tag the right accounts, and you can be one step closer to winning this epic setup. Now that's it guys, just a little bit of work and you can be one step closer to getting yourself your dream PC. I'm Captain Arya and this is the Esports Club and we hope to see you in our next tournament. The moment of creation is a form of magic where an off becomes an on, a zero becomes a one then another, and another, until, deep in the complexity, you discover order, speed, reliability, power, experience, the WD Black MVME SSD. darkness. Level up to MVME SSD performance.
ready to breach. What's up guys, Captain Arya from the Esports Club here, here with some pretty awesome news. Now as you probably know, we've been running the WD Black TEC League for Rainbow Six Siege powered by LG Ultra Gear for the past few months. As we come into August with our final season of the league, we wanted to celebrate with you guys who have made this an amazing experience and an extremely successful esports event. We've teamed up with some of our favorite partners to give away an entire esports PC for one lucky viewer. Yes, one of you is going to take home a complete PC featuring some of these awesome parts. First up, we've got the LG Ultra Gear 27GL 650F gaming monitor, 27 inch, 144Hz, 1ms with an IPS panel to make sure you're at the top of your esports game without sacrificing picture quality. Then we've got an amazing lineup of accessories coming in from HyperX to make sure that you're always on top of your game. The Cloud Stinger Core gaming headset. For the keyboard, you've got the awesome HyperX Alloy FPS RGB mechanical keyboard. Then your mouse is the HyperX Pulse 5. work and you can be one step closer to getting yourself your dream PC. I'm Captain Arya and this is the Esports Club and we hope to see you in our next tournament. The moment of creation 
is a form of magic, where an off becomes an on, a zero becomes a one, then another, and another, until, deep in the complexity, you discover order, speed, reliability, power. Experience the WD Black MVME SSD. Fueled by darkness. Level up to MVME SSD performance. Ready to breach. Go, go, go! Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the W Back the Esports Club League for Rainbow Six Siege, powered by LG Ultra Gear in association with AC Five Zota Gaming and Games The Shop. I'm your host, Blackjack, joining me with my co-host Ahmed Foxy and our analyst Babagusa, as we are here for the second game of the first stream and of the fourth day of Division Three in Season Five. Lots of numbers right there, I'm aware, but it is Naves Gaming versus Team L2K right now here on your screens. And before we get talking about the 
A quick reminder to all of our viewers to check out the Esports Club on Facebook and Instagram and the link down in the description of this stream right now for a giveaway of a limited edition Rainbow Six Siege PC featuring a Siege-themed cabinet from NZXT. There's only 500 of these across the world, so if you want to have a chance of winning one of these for yourselves, check out the Esports Club on Instagram and Facebook for details on how to enter this giveaway. With all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it is Naves Gaming taking on L2K, a very exciting game. Game indeed, as our analyst Bob Augusta has some thoughts to share about the game on hand. Baba, how are you today? Well, I'm doing great, Jack. So currently, since we are already on the prep phase, I'll definitely going to keep it short. Naves Gaming, according to their leaderboards, 3-2-1. They've only lost against Team Saw on Week 1 Clubhouse, where it was a score of 5-7. to seven. They've been performing really quite well, taking out uh, Sangford Esports and the other three important teams. Sync Ignite, yes, that is quite important to see it. Taking out Sync Ignite... And uh, they've actually did uh, take out against. Uh, actually, uh, they actually did take out against Saw, but they did not, however, uh, win the match against the team Nat. It was 7 to 3. And yeah, coming to L2K, the match that we are currently waiting for is Team L2K as well. Currently, according to their leaderboards, it is a 2 to 1 win loss ratio. They still, however, lost one matchup. And I believe that matchup was against Sync Gaming. The heavy aggression coming in from Sync Ignite couldn't handle the power. And uh, and we are going to be seeing L2K going up against Nave Gaming on map Villa. So coming in from on the uh, community votes here, it is quite a lot, Jack. Team L2K 83%, whereas Team Naves Gaming is on 17%. So... The whole viewers of TC Gaming, as according to see on the community boards, are favoring on the side of Team L2K. So, not much to say here, Jack. Back to you. Thank you for that, Baba. And we are, of course, already in the first round. We also had the ban phase not too long ago, but we'll talk about that in just a second. His blank has popped off already, taken down Mutasim and Sleek Ninja. Nice and quickly, the bandit is on fire, ladies and gentlemen. And he just did a massive, massive number. But the Jaeger on the second one is going to go down as the Hibana Nikoristo is going to collect that kill. And that's also a pretty big drop right there because that was the man himself, Rats, who was just dropped. With all that being said, it is still a three versus four for in favor of the side of L2K on the defense right now as JV, Blank, Fatals, and Rats. And of course, Nos are the ones from the side of L2K while Lancer, Sleek Ninja, Nikoristo, Mutasim, and Simplex are mounting the attack against this very strong defensive team. And round one, already underway to a fantastic start. The bands of the map are, of course, the Thatcher, Montaigne, Valkyrie, and the Kaid. As, a, as an angle, angle that is a line of sight is going to be opened on the pantry, uh, pantry stairs, excuse me, right there. The pantry's single wall on the pantry stairs, that is, towards the side of kitchen. Sight is, of course, kitchen and dining as well. So you want to make sure that you have all those angles open for yourself as an attacker. But Blank was on the roam. He's on the prowl as the Mozzie goes down out to the IQ's G8A1. Lancer takes that kill. Probably playing vertical right there as Blank is still up here. He can still make things happen because his team is now at a disadvantage. JV has just gone down. Smoke canisters are coming out from Nos as that is the easiest one tap in the world for the man with the triple kill right now. He's got to collect on two more and they're very close to sight. Pushing this smoke as another gas canister comes in to delay the push coming in towards Nos. The man is still alive but the diffuser is on the second floor. Down is in as Simplex will be reviving Lancer. That leaves both of them very low on HP as the bandit comes in, but he's going to be taken out instead. Misses his shots as that's one with the SMG. Will he find the other one? I don't think so. Does he know where the IQ is? He doesn't, but he's able to pull back just in time. Nos is going to see the kill. No, he won't actually. He gets wall banked for his trouble as Lancer is going to clutch it out for his team anyway. And that is actually the round. Oh, that. You love to see that. Just whipping around on the other side of the reinforcement and taking the kill, giving the side of Naves on the attack a rather fantastic start. It wasn't the best, you know, as uh, the bandit on the, the bandit on the room was, whoo, that was definitely something. But regardless, second for Aviator and Games is a side of a choice and we'll be moving on to round two right now.
attackers need to locate and defuse okay, bomb. Man. Well, round two is underway, ladies and gentlemen, and we've gone back to a, a more traditional opener side, shall we say, from the side of L2K. Nothing against the side of Kitchen Dining. It is a very defendable, very good side for that matter. But they've gone to second floor Aviator on round two after not being able to hold, it, uh, hold down on it on round one. And that is why we're seeing this side played. But more importantly, we're seeing the clash pick right here from Fatals. The man of for the last couple of matches that we've seen him play, he's done some fantastic work with the clash. And that is why he's brought that op out again. As the clash is going to be in play this round on Villa. Of course, it's day four, which means that Villa can be replayed. Most maps can be replayed for that matter, as the auto map band system has reset. Which means that all teams in Division 3, at least uh, all teams uh, playing today in Division 3, are going to have the option to... Wait a minute. What, did I just see the shotgun or was that my eyes deceiving me from rats? I'm not entirely aware. But Sleek Ninja has already been down in the meanwhile as the Nomad. That's a pretty big drop if the kill is managed to be confirmed. Oh, never mind. He just fell down. It, it wasn't anything big. It wasn't a down. It was just the fact that Sleek Ninja tripped, probably slipped on a rogue leaf right there. And uh, yeah, yep, fell off the roof. Down to 20 HP, he's going to have to be careful on what kind of gunfights he takes from this point onwards. And that's some very curious ADS placement from Rats, who's also running the M870. All right, a fantastic shotgun in its own right, don't get me wrong. But playing M870 on Villa is an interesting decision as Blank is holding down on traditional hallway towards the side of bedroom door. As uh, no damage has been done, he tried to fire onto Lancer. There's the clash for support, of course. But the Zofia is in with the lifelines and is going to be trying to find to at least, you know, trying to at the very least make the Clash retract a shield. But that's an impact grenade. That's not going to do the job as the Clash is just going to pull back and come back strong. Simplex, excuse me, Fatal is doing quite a lot of work. Shots are still being fired as Omai is under fire right now. He's going to go down instead as the drone spotted where he was and Lancer was able to take that kill. He's taking a bit of damage right here from the Clash, but Simplex finds JV. In the meanwhile, that's another dead as that's very unfortunate because that leaves Fatal's alone against three attackers who are trying to find him, but no, Sleek Ninja finds Rats, and Rats found Sleek Ninja. That's a trade right there as the turnaround comes in, but Fatals is unaware, unable to secure onto Simplex as Gas Cannons are coming out because the side push is already in. Naves Gaming are pretty close right now as Fatals is still fighting on red carpet stairs. He finds one, the SMG 11 is going to find two. As the shotgun comes out, the kill is into Nos. As Fatals, he's trying to pick the Zofia. Will he find her? Not quite. The plant is off in the meanwhile. And the Zofia is still, is actually not down, is down now. Simplex is off the board. It's a 1v2. All down to Nicoristo. Is he going to find the Clash? No, he's not. The Clash has extended his shield and is pulling back. While Nos is going to be going for the counter defense. Not quite. He knows the calls, but he goes down. Meaning it's a 1v1 against the Clash for Nicoristo. What a round it's been, ladies and gentlemen, as Clash, re Clash retracts the shield, comes in, turns around and gets the kill! Fatals with the 200 IQ play! Is gonna take the kill onto the last standing Habana and get to the diffuser just before it crosses the point of no return. And that should be the counter diffuse. It is L2K win round two. That was one hell of a round coming in from the side of Fatals. Gotta give it to the man. A 0 0.6 counter defuse. A 0 0.6 second counter defuse, people. Amazing, amazing stuff from Fatals right there with the clutch coming in from him. With the clash plays, definitely not something I was expecting to turn out of this situation. Naves Gaming looked very strong taking round two as well, but just not, just not able to fight the clash. And clash definitely a huge, a huge opponent. In fact, that. L2 are not able to fight against honestly it was just that the clash outplaying two of the operators straight up amazingly well done for the side of L2K Fatals bringing out the clash definitely something that they wanted to put on board and they is gaming they definitely were not expecting that you know the turn of events definitely not in the favor but let's see what happens going ahead into this match we got round three underway this is being pretty much the start of the entire day today for us honestly we're seeing the teams go back and forth amongst each other then it happens to somebody just happens to take a very marginal advantage and then it just goes on from them but so far that has not been the day and in fact this is only just the second match that we happen to witness we've still got tons of matches for you guys today coming up that is that is right people still got uh, 
So was his Statics Gaming after this. And KL11 Esports was his Sinking Night. The stream obviously will be another one that will be starting up on 8 o'clock. You can... 8, 8.30 I believe, yeah. 8.30 p.m. You can uh, head on to the channel on YouTube of the Esports Club and set the reminder on the event people. So the moment we are live, you will get a notification. So you don't have to miss out the action that we happen to come up in the next stream of Division 3 tonight as well. There's four more teams. Four more teams left to play. Definitely all of them will be fighting for that top... Uh, Top performance you want to put a maximum points on board being this the most um most influential week in terms of how a season goes for week two day four in fact this is uh, division three almost coming down to the last two play days let's see how this play day goes for them on week two simplex already getting aggressive he's taking a few shots that'll be the zofia is just gonna have to move back and forth a little bit about this but we're seeing the so he's got the hibana into it as well the push happen any moment now but let's see how that works for him. Breaches will be the priority, but they've also got to be careful in terms of the aggression that we're seeing L2K bring out. They're getting a little too... I'd say they're playing with a little too much of freedom, no insurance to the kind of plays that they're bringing out. Look at the Fatal's already getting awfully aggressive on the bicycle storage window. He might as well find somebody here. Even if there's no claimer coming out, there might be a possible no match charge. I don't believe so, but the Jackal... Jackal track comes in and that is what is going to stop him. The push is already in for the Zofia was not expecting that. And Naves Gaming once again with an aggressive start to the attack is going to get the refrag in. And that will be JV. Tries to get another. Yes, he will do that. Almost dying to that IQ Lancer. Uh, definitely not feeling good about that death for himself. But three was four of all sorts. Uh, definitely in the favor of uh, Dwell 2k. Definitely a nice set that they're happening to defend on as well. But C4 has come out. That's not going to claim anything to Nicoris though. But he goes down anyway with the, the frag. And what is that turnaround from the bandit? Rats gets a double kill. What was that turnaround? Honestly, what was that shot? We still got the push up from the Jackal's position. It's been given away as well. And it's been once again a frag, fring frag frenzy for Dwell 2k. They've been bringing out these frags back to back. And they've been good at that. No breach, so Mutasim only has to worry about this doorway, which he will not worry about it enough. Jamie will be the one to put the shotgun shell in his body, making sure that L2K get themselves a nice advantage done for themselves. Really well done. A good attack and a good turnaround from Naves Gaming, as we knew them before, as you Sabres. It's just not enough. Round 4 will be underway. We've got a 1-2-2 to scoreline here. Let's see how things go down. How do things boil down to? L2K definitely has had a good run, but not, not, not a great run though. They still sit on the third spot. First one is um, on Nat. Second one, I just cannot remember. Let me take a quick look and let you guys know. Second one, uh, anyways, I'll, I'll just take a quick look at that. Meanwhile, run four will be underway in Blackjack. What are your thoughts about going ahead into this match? You've got Willa, a really nice match and a good change up as well in terms of how the pool was uh, going on in the recent days. Mm -hmm. And just like you mm -hmm. mentioned, mm -hmm. Today is indeed the reset of the map pool as we have the auto map pick and ban system coming in. So giving so much more freedom for the side of for both these teams to pick from a larger map pool. And yeah, Villa being the map, being these teams, who do you think has a chance about this? And also, I, I, I'm not sure if I caught the community votes myself, but I would love to know that as well. Just a little bit of that thrown around. I want to know what we are going into on the round four you know with uh, everything that we have on our hands for these teams well if you ask me foxy villa being the map that it is it is as we all know a defender sided map and now that oh 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 dear looks like blank is gonna point out the fact that uh, echo that is rats is guilty of a little bit of a uniform mishap. Oh dear me, the side of Naves Gaming obviously want them to team kill right here to allow no rehost and go straight in. As of course we'll be conferring with the admins about that. Well, it looks like there's a spawn peek coming in from the side of Blank, but who's he gonna be spawn peeking first? His own teammate or the rest of Naves Gaming? Oh, nope, that's gonna be the Frost to do that instead. Curiously enough, Fatals with the Frost, not the Clash, not any other Operator, not a Jaeger, no one, my either. It's a Frost. Well, Okay, pretty interesting decision from L2K. Just as you said, Foxy, you know, they're mostly doing a frag game, not really worrying too much about a utility. Playing off of Intel and what little bit of utility these operators bring seems to have been enough, although Rats, unfortunately, will not be playing this round. 
In terms of the spotting where Blank's playing, that is the Aviator Room top, uh, Aviator Room door facing office. There's a shield here to help him, but the flashbangs are going to come in. Is he going to find Blank's face? No, it's not. Will the peak find Blank's face is the real question. There's a prone peak coming in. Is he aware? No, he is now, but that was a grenade, and he's going to go down as well as Sleek Ninja is going to take that kill as Blank is off the board. It's a three versus five right now. A little unfortunate for the side of L2K, but they've still got one more roamer to deal with. That's the Frost out on the nine. T hallway. Nomad slowly approaching Valtus as an ash all the way to the other side of classical hallway, trying to find where Fatals is sitting. They don't have his exact position right now, but the clearance, of course, will let them know via process of elimination that there's a frost close by, at least on 90 hallway. There goes a the smoke. Another one went down just earlier, meaning it's a one versus five for Fatals. He has to find five hole operators, and he's going to start by pinging off the ash, but there's the Nomad, comes around, ping, swings wide, excuse me, and a sleek ninja will take the final kill of the round, giving the side of Naves Gaming the equalizer once again in the early game still as it is two to two going into round five. Mm -hmm. All right, round five will be underway. Uh, two to two, definitely not something that um, I was expecting going ahead into this match, but I'm not exactly surprised as well, you know, because Having to see the matches before this, it's been it's been quite the two and fro between themselves, and you know we get to see a whole lot of this when it comes to matches like these. But who will be the ones to take off a distinctive advantage going ahead into this match? Naves Gaming have definitely been strong for themselves. They've been more than just holding their own since the beginning of this league in Division Three, back and forth between Division Two as well. But they've never gotten relegated though, at least not not that I know of. Maybe they have. It's five long seasons. So much happening, but I knew for a fact that you Sabres have not been out of the out of the action, at least not in the league. So yeah, going back to that, Zeus Sabres, definitely a nice name that they have rocking for themselves now. Naves Gaming, looking uh, with the same power, just 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 a little the uh, little bit of rebranding with the team and gone to definitely something you need for yourself, that kind of uh, support as well. But what really interests me is the fact that we've got L2K struggling to even survive here against uh, a team that has been in Division 3 for far too long now. So that just shows how much of potential Zeus Sabres have brought on board or how much L2K is lacking. I don't know which one of that is. I'll leave it up to you guys to find out. But th that is definitely something that does put me up to question because L2K has everybody, all of these players from Division 1. And it's just a little bizarre, you know. You have to be Division 1 players. You cannot just let Division 3 teams give you such a tough fight. Maybe Naves Gaming has just gotten better. That's It's that simple. They can play better. I'm not under underestimating them at all. And that's why going ahead, we'll be seeing a whole lot more that they are, in fact, giving more than just a tough fight. They look very strong in terms of how they want to approach. Just look at that once again. A very swift attack push coming in from the Zofia along with the IQ Lancer and Simplex. Both of them will be pushing in the clash. Well, there's something they've got to be scared of, and that is going to be taken care of by Sleek Ninja from down below. They're gonna make this push up happen. He's gotta be very careful about this. He's trying to find a clash. But no, he's gonna be found by the mute instead. And that's a turnaround from Rats, but he gets shut down right back in place. And that's huge from Lancer getting that frag on board. He definitely wants to get aggressive on this clash, but there's a Maestro waiting. JV has pushed awfully close. That'll be the first frag in, but there's one more, and there's another for Blank as well. This has been the clash play for Fate. It's definitely taking all the attention, but letting Blank go frag heavy. A triple comes in, a kill comes in from the Vermai, in fact, securing the round for L2K. And they've definitely heard me out, you know, taking it a little too personally. Team L2K says we are going to go out, frag them in this match, in this round at least, is because that's what we like to do the most. L2K, definitely a nice round for them, but maybe I'm, I'm scared. Maybe it's a little too, uh, a little too frag dependent. What if... Uh, what if we see Naves Gaming picking that kind of uh, fashion up, you know, picking, picking up that trend, picking up the strategy that they are trying to play in. L2K will find themselves in a spot. Let's see if that's going to be the case or not. Round 6 will be underway. I've got the last round coming in before the roll swap and definitely I'd love to see how Naves Gaming happens to perform on defense. But right now, their priority is going to be putting the last round, that is round 6, the round right now, on board while they happen to be on attack and make the score an equalizer and not an advantage for Team L2K. What do you, Blackjack? 
Thank you for that, Foxy. And it is, in fact, 3-2 to two in favor of L2K. And just as I said, L2K would like to go into the side of uh, of uh, their attack. Excuse me, L2K would like to go on the side of their attack in the uh, advantage 4-2 in their favor. Naves Gaming, of course, they would like to equalize right here, right now, go into the defense at least with a couple rounds worth of cushioning in case they have a bad time starting off on defense. And um, pretty much that's how it goes. You know, on Villa, going onto the defense is an advantage regardless of how you look at it. Sure, maybe you could have that one isolated match or even a couple of matches where attackers win, but that is just competitive in those six as the general consensus is that Villa is a defender-sided map. That's probably not going to change anytime soon unless, I guess, Villa gets reworked, but that's a long ways away. Villa's a great map, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so right now, round six is going to be underway the action phase is in the hibana nikorista making well actually that's not nikorista that's the sledge that is uh the simplex right there while sleek ninja makes his way towards the side of veranda along with the zofia shots being fired all over the map the side itself is actually trophy stout story aviator was just won by the side of l2k as they will not have to worry about going back there at least for the time being unless this game goes to overtime and now only their roamers will be playing around towards the side of AVG, at least close to AVG, and maybe one or two players down below. Oh, there we go. The prone peeks in from the Jaeger. There's the Vigilant side of Vault as well. Blank along with Rats holding down AVG as best as they can. They've even got to rotate here on a Vault just to make sure that they have all the angles that they need for themselves of watching that office doorway. But well, that's one office has two doorways. One of them, of course, leads out to the hallway, classical hallway. The vigil's been spotted, and he's about to be pushed. Rats, he's got to be careful of where his position is. But no, they're coming back to the office door of Aviator. And will they be found by one of these defenders? Not quite. They're still droning. There's two attackers right there, the Zofia and the Nomad. Want to make sure that this push, if they make it, is going to be as um, as heavy on intel as possible as one of the drones is going to escape from Rats' wrath. And he's got to be careful as he's now pushed farther into Vault. His position is known. There are a couple of attackers fo uh, focusing on his position right now. There's a Jaeger to try and help him out in this situation, and he will actually find one. Sleek Ninja goes down. That is your Nomad. That's a huge drop right there as Mutasim is going to swing wide, but not going to find Lancer. In the meanwhile, shots are being fired as there was a little line of sight that Mutasim was unaware of, and he's taking so much damage. Simplex is going to find Blank in the meanwhile, dropping the Jaeger. That's one big, big drop. The Carbine is no longer in play. More importantly, that's Blank of the board it is a three versus four make that a two versus four the sledge was unaware of where rats was playing unfortunately he's gonna be taken off the board leaving mutasim and only mutasim as the hibana drops just as i was about to call out his position and fatals is gonna make sure i don't get that chance mutasim the zofia the last one remaining peaked and taken out on the astronomy stairs nos swings wide with the smg 11 takes that kill and gives the side of l2k round six as going into round seven roll stop l2k will be able to fulfill their desire of going advantage on roll swap it is 4-2 in their favor round seven is going to be underway Alright, quite the play we're getting to see from the side of both these teams here, but more importantly is being L2K, you know, depending a whole lot in terms of the gunfights, they're definitely getting a little too aggressive sometimes, bringing on some amazing fights, you know, being patient about it at the same time as well. So, right now, I think what L2K is trying to go for is, they want to bring out a little bit of a quicker meta, you know, try and finish out rounds and overwhelm this gaming a little bit, and... That's why I like the lineup from the side of L2K as well. JB running the line. We've got Rats on the Ash. We've got Fatals on the Blitz. And Nos on IQ. Definitely a great lineup. It looks like they want to get a little more frag heavy. You know, try try and play try and play the, to their strengths basically. But on the other side, all the side of the defense is winning. Look at this. I got Simplex winning the Jaeger while we've got Mutasim anti Intel. Very important for stopping any kind of a initial rush as well. We've got Nicolisto on the Mumai. 
Lancer and Sleek Ninja are the main, the main heroes here. You're gonna get the Goyo and the Legion in. That's right. It's gonna do so much more denial in terms of map controls that they can bring out. And Simplex already you wanna find a kill on the blank. Where did that come out of? I'm not sure. Was that a spawn peak? Did Blank just get deleted? Yes, he did. Look at that. Rappel did not go well for him. Definitely is regretting that out. Meanwhile, there's a fight that he's taking here. That might be the Blitz and Fatals will be the one to take that kill very gladly, in fact. I'm still seeing the Garisto re engage on the same angle, but the flank from Simplex will get caught out as well. The Garisto wants to get that frag onto the Blitz. He's gonna get that anyway. Oh, what? Jamie, what was he doing? The push up came in, but. Nick Aristo just deleted him. Good night, JV. I'm not sure what JV was thinking. Honestly, that was one hell of a shot from Nick Aristo. Somehow that connected. Somehow that happened. All right. I was confused for a second myself on what just happened. Anyways, Rats and the Nos will be the ones, uh, the ones left in a two versus four right now. Double the man count. Make that. Make that a whole lot more in the favor of Naves Gaming. It's all on Nos now. The IQ is gonna push up. Gonna find the Goya though. I'm gonna find the guy. He's gonna see the guy for them. I gotta find him yet, or maybe never. We're seeing some prefires coming from the top of the sofa, as we like to call it. The top of the main stage. We got that little elevation for ourselves. I'll still be watching that angle. He's getting tagged along from multiple angles. He must is definitely looking very bad right now. And there's a push up from the Jaeger, and that'll be the kill for Simplex. Simply put, amazingly, put, amazingly well played from the side of Naves Gaming. Um, Let's see what we got ourselves going ahead into this round because now it had a disconnection from blank. That is sad. Uh, that is usually, usually sad for team live to kill. But now let's see how they can stay alive with only four members on board. We've got trophy and statue room coming in from the side of the defense from Naves Gaming. And right now I'll take a sit on fourth spot while Naves Gaming sit on third spot. Winning this, Naves will be putting themselves on a better position while team L2K will get pushed further down into the league. Let's see what have. What we've got for ourselves, round eight will be underway. Four to three is indeed the scoreline, and the equalizer might as well be into place from the side of Naves. It is only a flimsy one round lead from the side of a team L2K. A one round lead that lead, excuse me, that's about to be challenged even further from the side of Naves Gaming. As of course, L2K have just lost a blank, and that is very, very unfortunate. But power issues and whatnot, they are the bane of anybody trying to play competitive Rainbow Six. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, competitive games just in general. And uh, being our region as it is, uh, yeah, it's not really surprising that there's a power issue once again, as uh, it, players have been plagued with that for a while now. Hopefully it gets better soon-ish. We'll, we'll find out in the coming days. But that is, of course, besides the point, a vague future is, uh, is going to have to be left to its own devices, as the present is what we focus on. Naves Gaming, 3-4 down against L2K. L2K, one man down without even losing a body. Round 8 is in play, and just as we said, it's a flimsy little one-round lead that L2K have. They want to make sure that they get more rounds on board for themselves, while the side of Naves, they want to make sure that they have as much... That they get as much uh, as much frags, as many frags as they need right now, and get as many rounds on board for themselves as they possibly can. Mutasim finishing up the reinforcements towards the side of the game room as flashbangs are in. Mutasim, he's going to take a flashbang, but he's still... He wasn't fully blind either, but... The shield and the alibi that were there before on the AVG door are no longer there this time. JV pushing this out of bedroom. He's got to be careful of somebody playing inside of the closet while Fatals is going to be pushing it with the IQ towards the side of Classical Hallway. Maybe to try and find where this alibi is playing. Unfortunately, that's not her. That is just a Prisma. Nos, the IQ, you'd think he'd know, but unfortunately, he's not got the RD scanner out. He's just focusing on the gunfights, and he may find the Omai any second. Now, if he's still on 90 hallway, he actually is coming back, and he swings in, gets the kill, and only doesn't even take any damage, actually. I thought that bullet connected, but it seemed to not have. And sees the punch hole, but no, that's not the angle you need. Regardless, it's going to work out for Fatals, who finds Sleek Ninja. That's the alibi of the board, and now the man count has swung in favor of Team L2K. As Nicaristo, Simplex, and Lancer are the only ones remaining. Lancer actually finds one. Rats is off the board. Was that a one tap? I'm not sure. Didn't even hear that many bullets go out as the Ash is down. Three versus three is the scoreline. And now the side of L2K have to get into sight. Oh, Fatal's is going to find Simplex as well. The Jaeger trying to come in for the flank is off the board as uh, 
It is all down to, well, okay, the castle's actually denying the hard breach. At least he was trying to, as JV's gonna find one, but the castle's gonna find one as well. Nikurisa takes down JV, that's the refrag gain for the kill on the Echo, and now it's a 1v2 for the castle to play, and he's rotating around Master Bathroom, coming in towards the side of Trophy. The drones are spotted where he is, and a Trophy is gonna be the showdown site as Nikurisa takes a bit of damage. Fatos is the one who's gonna be going for this plant, if he's aware of the castle's position, that is. The Zofa's getting pinged from behind the bomb. Shots are being fired as the Super Shorty comes out, but no, that's a little early. Is he still going to get the down? Yes, he is. Is he going to get the kill? Yes, he is. Is the super shirt he going to get one? No, it doesn't have any ammo. And Nikorista is so close to being taken off the board. Look at that. You can see the gun metal peeking from the side of the door. Fatos knows this. Does he have an impact? He does, but no, Fatos. That's not where you throw the impact. What is happening this round? As a fatal oh dear me, he's gonna sigh in disbelief at what he just did. He's only got so much time. As he's gonna try and rotate around, maybe juke him. He's gonna go in, hip firing. But Castle comes in, but Fatals will take the kill. Finally, after a comedy of errors from both sides, L2K will still take round eight on second floor trophy. And oh boy, what a <laughs> oh, what a finishing that was to the round, ladies and gentlemen, as it is now five to three in favor of Team Live to Kill on round nine. Honestly, that was a great attempt from the castle. <laughs> he did his best, <clears throat> just could not walk out of that little corner. He knew that, and the Fatals knew that as well. Got the clutch in well and good. But that was one hell of a round, honestly, that was one hell of a round. Team Live to Kill, it looks like they are not really banking on. They're not really exactly sad about blank leaving. They've been. Uh, they just put another round on board and really well done as well, putting themselves one round away from match point. Definitely something that they want to convert into. Maybe that's uh, that's what they want to be doing going uh, going ahead into this match. We got round nine on the way. Let's see how that works out for them. Lancer making sure we're getting the reinforcements and whatnot, and he's brought up the Echo this time around. They got Mutasim on the Vamai along with Simplex on the Jaeger. Don't really blame them. That's the way the, that's the, way the meta works. They got uh, Nikoristo is the Legion, uh, and no, excuse me, we got Nikoristo on the castle. Sneak is now being the Legion, as um, definitely we'll we'll be, we'll be seeing a, a whole lot more from them today and tonight as well. Uh, Tonight, if you guys are up for, we've got matches coming up uh, until up to 9:30 in the night. So maybe after 9:30, you you want to see some despicable plays. But definitely, we can we can hook you up with those because you've got so much more coming in from uh, the teams of Division Three. Let's see how that works out going ahead um, tonight. Though. Yeah, Fatals, we've got the drone works coming in from the Zofia. And there'll be Nas on the IQ, uh, IQ as well. I got JV on the Hibana. I got Rats playing the hash as well. Very good operating line is, but Rash is a little too hungry for these keys. He's, he's moved on. He might as well get caught, but now the information trade off is coming first. Fatal's gonna find that frag that was supposed to found, find Rats. And Simplex is taking the fall. Rats gets the kill anyway. And that's the cleaner from Team Live to kill. In terms of how you want to bring out your classic Rome Clear operators. Push up from the side of the bedroom is being stopped by the side of the defense. Names can be trying to stay as strong as they can in the situation, which I believe they cannot really stay that much of because the push has definitely, definitely broke the side of Names Gaming apart. Losing two of your very crucial and three of your very crucial defenders on board. Make a restart takes a fall. JV is here adding up to that. That amazing kill count there for themselves. A white push isn't from Mutasim is gonna get the frag under Rats was busy pulling out a stun running. That's a double for the Omai. He's pulling out plays here for the scene. Brought the equalizer in terms of man count as well. He might as well maybe be able to make these plays happen, but he's gotta be careful of the breach, and that's why he's just gonna have to fall back for a minute. JV knows exactly where he's playing the audio, though that is definitely going to give away his position. The push-up is in from Lancer, but the IQ already got a kill over there. That's a one versus one between Lancer, the IQ and the Echo. He's gotta make the push happen, but Echo more. They're intelligent. You know that efficiency, clever laziness. You want to bring out the yokai drone first. You want to throw him in. You want to, you want to make sure that all of that is accounted for. But Nos is the IQ. He can spot those yokai drones. He's going to spot them with his bare eye instead. Does not even need the ID scanner. Wants to go for the plant over here. He's going to go for it. He's waiting for it. The echo is going to wait for the sticking. No, but then the plant is still going to go down. That's a huge play. Lancer now has to play in a post plant, and that's all the while more. More comfortable of a spot for the IQ, definitely so much more 
so much more time that is uh, being propelled up both of these sets let's see he's going to be able to beat the clock in 30 seconds first a three armor trying to find a frag going aggressive going and going wide will be found and team l2k will be staying alive with their some amazing creatures we've gotten to got to see from the side of this team definitely amazing Look at that, getting the one versus two clutch in for himself with the push coming in from the IQ and L2K will be going to match point people. That's right, a four versus five still winning. Definitely outplaying whatever we've seen Naves Gaming brought out today. Let's see how that turns out. Six to three is the score line. L2K one run away from winning this match. That is exactly how dangerous this team is. A team lift to kill comprised of players from Division One teams. Ladies and gentlemen, they are a deadly group, even if they are playing a four versus five. The Naves Gaming is finding that out firsthand today, even if the last couple of rounds have come incredibly close, all the way down to the 1v1s and 1v2s. Fortunately, it is still L2K who are the first to get to match point. 6-3 is the scoreline in their favor. And former Zoo Sabres, now Naves Gaming, stand on the precipice of being defeated today here in the WD Black Esports Club League for Rainbow Six Seas. It certainly made that sound a lot more grander than uh, I meant it to even caught me by surprise, but we've got a hold on the Classical Hall. One Goyo shield here from Lancer, and the Omai Nikoris is probably bringing out another deployable shield towards the side of offices. The default spot that the Omai sits down on has an ADS to protect the shield, has a couple of Omai magnets as well, so that he can stay there uh, uncontested. The suppressor on the Rhino, interesting choice there from Nikoristo. But of course, the Rhino is uh, more used to just open up little lines of sight here and there, similar to how the Deagle and the GIGN revolver work. Simplex, he's got the Jaeger, the Samurai, Lancer is the man with the Goyo, just as we discussed. Sleek Ninja with the Legion, he's going to be important. And wait a minute, Mutasim was all the way down at the bottom basement. It's pretty interesting right there. We normally see a Pulse play down here, but no Pulse in play from Naves. They're going to be playing the Bandit, as there's going to be a Claymore from Fatals. Is that going to cover it? I don't think so. Oh, it does. All right, pretty interesting right there. The last uh, the last laser, that's all you need, really, as a Fatal. Speaking of him, he's going to make a line of sight on the red carpet hallway down below to make sure that he gets all the kills on any flankers in that particular area. Nikarista is actually holding inside a site, not towards the side of the office door. He's pulled back as flashbangs are coming off. Rats is taking a bit of damage. I'm not sure whose vector, at least where the vector is shooting, but more more pieces of utility are being found out as simple as he's seen one. Is he going to get the kill though? There's the Omai for support, but no, as damage is all, you know, it's only being done, excuse me, to Rats and Fatals. They're still alive and plenty of HP for those operators, for those players to work around. They're not going to be afraid of taking these gunfights as L2K has been fairly frag heavy this round but will this turtle hold from the side of it well i say turtle hold will this hold from the side of naves gaming work out they've got plenty of deployable shields plenty of denial for the attacker utility as jv is going to make his way onto the veranda of second floor office Nas still holding down the flank from astronomy stairs that's just one of the spots that the bandit or the eager could come out from as vertical is being played by the excuse me the ash Oh, the Goyo swings wide. He's going to find one as Lancer takes that kill and denies a few Xkyros pellets. As he's going to be allowed to see it here in Aviator, he's taking some shots. Our shots are being fired towards him, and he'll just have to pull back for the time being. That was a Diffuser drop as well, but the Diffuser has been recovered. Nas is going to find one. That's Mutasim of the board. That's a pretty big drop right there. That is the Bandit who could have been big on the flank taken down. The Ash is going to swing wide, try and find anybody, but not quite. He's checked out the close angle. He's going to take out the Vulcan shield, but no, there's the Womai charge. And unfortunately, that was the only frag, uh, excuse me, that was the only breaching charge the Ash had. As a more of those uh, ADS, excuse me, Xyros Pellets have been denied, and Sleekness is going to find the Hibana herself. JV goes down, leaving it in a 2v4, all down to Rats and Nos. L2K not looking that great this round. They're definitely hurting for the presence of a fifth. As Simplex still holding down. Rats is going to find one, but he's going to get refragged onto by the Jaeger, holding that Vulcan shield on the classical hallway, leaving Nos, the last man standing in the last 10 seconds of the round. He's going to push in right inside a sight. He's got Diffuser. He's going to find the Goya at least. No, he's not. He's going to miss his shots. The barbed wire slows him down. Lancer takes the kill. And that's going to keep the side of Naves Gaming on the defense alive. They're going to win round 10.
Japan making it a 6 to 4. It is still match point in favor of all 2K people, but round 11 is in play and Naves have just pulled off a brilliant defense. They need to pull off two more of those if they want to push for overtime, give themselves a second chance. While all 2K are going to be looking to close this match out right here, right now. Round 11 is where the showdown is about to take place. That is uh, so true. Round 11 was where the showdown will indeed take place. We've got uh, Live to Kill definitely finding themselves in a really difficult spot. You've got only two rounds before you can convert your possible possible match point into possible victory. But will you be able to do that or not is the real question. We've got this XP coming in onto the Bandit from the Frost as well. Naves Gaming, looking very good, looking very strong as well. I wouldn't really... Uh, be a little too over dependent on the word strong because they're definitely not looking great on the low or on the leaderboard either and the, and i don't mean the divisional leaderboard mind you right now the naves gaming sits above team l2k in terms of the division leaderboard that is amazing that is great but in terms of the score count for this match definitely not something that i was expecting um expecting to see out of this one I was expecting a whole lot more more of a fight being put up, but maybe we're still yet to see that uh, that side of Naves Gaming. We're still yet to see them put these two more rounds on board and take us to overtime. That is very great possibility of that. Of, there is a very great possibility of that happening. But will we be able to see that or not? It all depends on L2K winning or losing these two rounds. Most definitely, they are looking to finish this out. They definitely have not asked for real, so that means they've got a possible. A possible issue with one of the players that is not just fixable by a single simple Rios. So four is five. They need to win this. And a very smooth rapper from Nos. Was that smooth as hell or was I zoned out? I don't know. That, that I mean, it's so smooth for me. All right. Anyways, the animations of the rappers I don't want to talk about it anymore. We will be seeing Nos make his make his way in. He's got uh, <clears throat> he's got his friend Zofia as well with standing up with them rats. That's a very quick take, in fact, on the top floor. But the top floor presence is not, in fact, even there from the side of the defense. Everybody will be playing on side. We've got five of them, all five of them on side. Simplex with the prep C4. He wants to go for it. He's watching that. He's going to get it. No, he won't claim anybody or anything with it. That's a good attempt, but just not enough. That's just not good enough. We're seeing the hard breach or soft breach, everything, all this breach is happening from the side of the attack. They want to make sure that they're challenging the side of the defense with maximum top floor control, top floor pressure. The vertical gameplay that you want to bring out, definitely uh, you know, normal stuff, normal stuff what you want to bring out on Villa. Nothing new, but something you definitely need to do. We're seeing the Zofia stun grenades being caught and whatnot. Zofia is definitely not having a great time with that, but my charge is finally going to go off along with the shield, interestingly. so. Not a great place to keep up a mind child after all. We'll be seeing Nos drop on a frag. That'll be the first one. Simplex is going to take, be taken off the board. A very huge kill, in fact, for him. We're seeing Lancer, though. He's getting a little aggressive from this window. He might as well be able to claim a life, maybe, from it. If he happens to calculate his aggression properly and plays his footsteps accordingly. JV, very ballsy with the solo piece that he's trying to attempt here. The push up will not get spotted and will not be found. But no, the push up happens in the form of an impact grenade and not the gun. That is what puts. JV is still alive here. I'm not sure what just happened. That's one hell of a lucky timing for the side of JV. And the attackers see that he happens to hold. He still wants to go wide about this. He's not going to be able to find anybody. He's going to get down. And finally, the kill comes in from Sleek Ninja. And that'll be a legion getting the first kill on board for the side of the defense. Sleek Ninja taking a little damage from his own teammate. I think that was. But here's Nickel Beach. They're going to find the kill onto Nas. It's all under rats and fails. The duo that tried to make the singular push happen just could not make it. Make it uh, nice enough, just could not draw enough attention or even frags. And there goes Fatals as well. It's all on the rats and a one versus four. The Zofia has to find four kills if he wants to make this clutch and secure this match for his team. He's going to find the first frag though on this endeavor of a possible clutch. He's going to get the first frag in. Ten more seconds remain. Won't be able to find anybody with this uh, time limit that he has for himself. And there's a shotgun to the face. And there will be all the shells emptied in the body of the Zofia. Because it will be Naves Gaming getting themselves another breather before they happen to get the equalizer in for the match point situation that left to kill has happened to put themselves up in round 12 will be underway and now we're one round away from l2k winning this match and one round away from naves gaming taking us to overtime
The round of ones is in, round 12, ladies and gentlemen, as it is one round for the side of L2K to close this match out, avoid the avoid the hassle of overtime and make sure that they get another win on board for themselves. But the side of Naves Gaming, they have one round to push for overtime, get the equalizer, but more importantly, give themselves a second chance at winning this game. It has been a fantastic game from both teams as they stand on the precipice of what could be the match ending or overtime being in play. Round 12, the round of ones is underway. We've got the hold coming out on the side of Second Floor Trophy from the side of Naves Gaming. They've come back to this site after uh, yeah, after not having the best of times on Second Floor Trophy, but they've won Aviator and Kitchen back to back, and they don't want to attempt library. Of course, nobody wants to attempt library, so they've decided to come back here on the second floor. Excuse me, right there. Uh, trophy room site. Trophy and accessory site, that is. Four versus five, L2K have been giving it their all despite being in a four versus five situation. But at the end of the day, it's just down to the fact that, you know, there's just some things you can't avoid. And a four versus five is always an inherently hard battle in Rainbow Six Siege, let alone competitive Siege. Ten kills each to Lancer and Nas. That's a pretty big set of kills right there from both of these beautiful players here in the lobby for ourselves. While, of course, we've got Simplex with nine Fatals and Rats with nine each as well. Nikoristo, seven to him. Mutasim and Sleek Ninja, four and five respectively. And JV, six kills to him. Plenty of kills being traded between both teams. Of course, we had some kills that were taken by Blank. But he's not here for us to check out the scoreboard for him. That's why we're in this uh, four versus five situation. A power, power issue in his uh, in his area. That's why he's not able to join us for the rest of this game. Fatal's pushing up on towards landing nice and quickly, meeting zero resist resistance. Excuse me, from the side of the defense, he's gonna put down a claimer on the red carpet stairs and gonna pull back up with the lifeline. No, not quite. He's gonna see the castle barricade. He's gonna see a regular barricade. Takes out the regular one instead. Interestingly enough. There is somebody playing towards the side of astronomy that he's got to be careful of, and the Twitch comes in with a breach charge to take out the castle barricade here towards the landing side. It almost takes some damage, rats, mind you, from the peak from the Omai. Oh the prone peak that is underneath the castle barricade, but his position is going to be giving way. So is the mute and the echo. I don't think he saw the echo, though. Fatal's right there. He's going to slowly pull in. He's got to be careful of that. He sees that Omai oh magnet. Unfortunate deployment right there as Omai oh knows exactly where he is. Trying to peek at head level fatals. He's just pre frying it a little bit to scare the Omai. Oh but Mutasim is undeterred. Takes out the Twitch drone as ADSs are being burned by the Zofia. Who's trying to, who's trying to make sure that he can get a entryway cleared for the side of these defend, excuse me, these attackers. The defender is holding strong right now. Naves Gaming not giving up regardless of the kind of push coming in from the side of L2K. As Motasim still strong on statutory. He's still being allowed to play here. And of course, JV, he tried to go for the hard breach on the bedroom wall. Unfortunately, was not able to. Flashbangs being thrown in, getting denied by Womai Magnus. It's even more Womai Magnus come in. And as the Zofia pushed in, she has... As the Echo's gonna go down, that was an unfortunate peak from the side of Nikorista as Mutasim goes down as well. Fatals are gonna start things off along with Nos, but Rats goes down to Sleek Ninja. In the meanwhile, there's a Jaeger to try and equalize things, and he has, but the 3 versus 3, how long is it gonna stay that way? Not long, JV finds one, Simplex finds one as well. Nos and Sleek Ninja go down, and there goes the castle inside of Closet. It's a 1v2, all down to Simplex, the last man standing, and now Fatals has to go for the plan, but there isn't enough cover from the Hibana, not just yet. They've got just enough time to make this play happen, to make sure that the hard breach is done. Simplex is inside of Trophy. He's trying to find somebody inside of Statuary. The planter, but Fatals, he's got covered behind the Statuary entryway. And he's going to get the plant off. And the shots as well from JV. As L2K, they had a couple of scary rounds right there. But they will still win it out here on the map of Villa on the second match of the first half of the W Back Esports Club League for Rainbow Six Siege Division 3 Day 4. Many, many numbers right there. Lots of words being thrown around, but indeed, L2K are your winners here on Villa 7-5, to five, making it the second 7-5 to five of the day. But before we close out this first stream, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have um, Baba Gusta, our analyst, come in for his thoughts on the match. Baba, the mic is yours. Wow, I, I just did not expect her to see that coming, knowing for the fact that they had around, it was basically a 4v5 situation there. Uh, 
due to a blank having some serious power cut issues but damn i did not expect them to win a uh, 45 situation and that too on attack on map villa attacking in the game of siege is not that easy as you think and l2k just proves to be effective and uh, wh when i talk about frags i have to definitely talk about uh, the last round in which Nico Risto makes his one little mistake that he did on astronomy where he tried to hold an angle from the hatches did not see Nos holding up an angle from the landing group eventually getting that open frag pushes in even the Zofia also does the same getting that control on the side of statuary room that was uh, uh, that was a huge adrenaline rush coming on the side of L2K and finally winning that out they should be you know happy about it and that's how dominant that they are on division three just imagine how well that they're going to be performing on division two or one that is going to be absolutely extraordinary there uh coming to uh coming on the side of naves gaming yes they did had a lot of uh, problems to deal with but uh, i still have to give a lot of appreciation to lancer when he was on the attack playing as the iq the l8 no the l8 is from this let's the g8 lmg she was get, get, getting quite a lot of important kills and not to mention about uh you know the Vomai getting those important kills time to time when he was on defense even though that they were even though the attackers were mostly trying to use the utility to counter the you know to eventually exhaust the utilities but every single time when a Zofia uses a case we lifeline to you know use an impact grenade or a normal concussive grenade Mutasim, yes, Mutasim. Mutasim was the one who would always catch Zofia off guard and most probably he would actually get a free kill just by doing that. He actually did it around two to three times when he didn't had, uh, on, on the side of L2K when Zofia when using her KSU life plan, he didn't had any other of his teammates holding an angle to cover him, especially if he tries to peek it back again. So a, a really well placed coming in from Naves Gaming, but unfortunately L2K will emerge victorious and quite an unexpected one though, L2K even with the power cuts coming in you know a uh, blank uh, the, uh, on the starting amounts of rounds we actually did see you know blank going up with an early spawn peak uh, getting those two important kills but uh, you know laser on the other side i, I believe yes it was lancer uh, who was there to recover it out it, it was really uh, it was really great and also on round five uh, Rats uh, taking out Sleek Ninja from above uh, when he was playing as the mute on the side of Statuary Room. That was really amazing, dude. No one, it's it's not that easy to use the uh, to use an SMG 11 which has low magazine capacity. It has high rate of fire, but it has uh, you know high rate of fire problems with recoil controls. But somehow takes out the Nomad from below in which they were actually kind of made an angle to take out Clash, but it actually you know it worked out quite the opposite. So yeah, that's uh, basically it from my analyst desk, uh, Jack. That's all I have. Thank you very much for that, Baba. The analysis of the game, as always, as we've had a couple of games here, ladies and gentlemen, in this stream on the first game, Cafe was the map, and Nat were the victors against Sangford Esports, continuing their winning streak, 75 for them, while the match that we just had, Villa, of with Naves Gaming versus Team L2K. L2K, they had some issues. A couple of rounds could have gone the other way here or there, but they still managed to win 7-5 as well. As we're going to be closing out this first stream and coming back with the second one in just a little bit, we'll be right back with that. Stay tuned, everybody. Captain Adia from the Esports Club here, here with some pretty awesome news. Now, as you probably know, we've been running the WD Black TEC League for Rainbow Six Siege, powered by LG Ultra Gear for the past few months. As we come into August with our final season of the league, we wanted to celebrate with you guys who have made this an amazing experience and an extremely successful esports event. We've teamed up with some of our favorite partners to give away an entire esports PC for one lucky viewer. Yes, one of you is going to take home a complete PC featuring some of these awesome parts. First up, we've got the LG Ultra Gear 27GL 650F gaming monitor, 27 inch, 144Hz, 1ms with an IPS panel to make sure you're at the top of your esports game without sacrificing picture quality. Then we've got an amazing lineup of accessories coming in from HyperX to make sure that you're always on top of your game. Cloud Stinger Core gaming headset. For the keyboard, you've got the awesome 
HyperX Alloy FPS RGB Mechanical Keyboard, then your mouse is the HyperX Pulsefire Surge. It's got a brilliant RGB all around the mouse. For the mouse pad, you've got the HyperX Fury S. That is the speed edition of the extended mouse pad. And then of course, for your memory, you've got the HyperX Fury RGB RAM. You've got 16 gigs at 3400 megahertz. Next up, we've got the WD Blue SN550 NVMe SSD to make sure you're spending as little time loading and booting up and spend more time gaming. And then of course, at the heart of this PC is the Ryzen 5 3600X CPU. Now, as you know it, at the heart of every gaming PC is a great GPU. So we've teamed up with Zotac Gaming to give you a brand new RTX 2060 because frames win games and there should be nothing between you and top of the line performance. Next up, we've teamed up with NZXT who makes some of the best and most premium PC components on the market. Powering your PC is going to be the C850 fully modular power supply and your cooling solutions are going to be taken care of the Kraken X63 all-in-one liquid cooler. Now we wanted to make this PC something truly special and while the NZXT H510 Elite is a great cabinet for anyone, it wasn't enough. We teamed up with NZXT to give the winner of this giveaway a brand new NZXT H510 Siege Edition cabinet. This is a limited edition licensed Rainbow Six Siege themed cabinet from NZXT. There are only 500 of these in the world and just a handful coming to India. The side panels of this cabinet are themed in the wall and door reinforcement designs from Rainbow Six Siege and there is an illuminated six icon on the front panel along with a six icon charm and a puck in the signature breach charge design which is only available with the H510 Siege. And one lucky winner on this giveaway is gonna get a full eSports PC sitting inside this beautiful cabinet. Now that you know everything that there is in the giveaway, the question is how you can take part. Well, it's fairly simple. First, head on to the link in the description of this video. Once you're at the giveaway landing page, fill out your details and follow the instructions. First, head on over to Facebook, make sure you're following us. Two, make sure you're following the eSports Club on Instagram. And three, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Simple so far. Now the interesting part. In a one minute video on Instagram, tell us why you deserve this epic new PC from the eSports Club and all our partners. Make sure you follow the instructions carefully, use the right hashtags, tag the right accounts, and you can be one step closer to winning this epic setup. Now that's it guys, just a little bit of work and you can be one step closer to getting yourself your dream PC. I'm Captain Arya and this is the Esports Club and we hope to see you in our next tournament. The moment of creation is a form of magic where an off becomes an on, a zero becomes a one then another, and another, until, deep in the complexity, you discover order, speed, reliability, power, experience the WD Black MVME SSD. Fueled by darkness. Level up to MVME SSD performance. Numerous forces aimed at the Earth.
Gamer Gear Gaming Monitor. Ready to breach. 